This is a regular. Whoa. Ooh. Voices from above. <laughs> Extra authority tonight. Um, um, actually, John is. This is a regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, before we proceed, uh, town planner would like to uh, mention something and read us uh, something into the record. Good evening. Uh, unfortunately, our court reporter is not able to be with us this evening. She was here earlier and now um, cannot be here. Uh, and as a result, I would just like to read into the record uh, the Connecticut State Statute Section 8-7A, which we follow for proceedings um, as it relates to, to recordings of these meetings. So when we get to the public hearing, um, obviously we won't, we won't um, have her to, to transcribe. However, the sound recording device that we do have will be active and we also have of course the um, videographer so I'll just read the statute into the record evidence at hearings and meetings to deliberate formal petitions applications requests or appeals to be taken by stenographer or recorded the Zoning Commission Planning Commission Planning and Zoning Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals shall call in a competent stenographer to take the evidence or shall cause the evidence to be recorded by a sound recording device in each hearing before such commission or board in which the right of appeal lies to the Superior Court and at each meeting in which such commission or board of appeals deliberates any formal petition, application, request, or appeal. So as I said, we will be recording and we will ask our court reporter to transcribe those tapes afterwards so everything will be back to normal in a few weeks. Thank you. <clears throat> On this evening's agenda, uh, there are several postponements and with withdrawn applications. Number three, Miltides LLC is postponed. <coughs> Number six, South Water Street is postponed. Number seven, CRK is withdrawn. Number eight, CRK is withdrawn. So with that, Reduced agenda. We shall have start with number one, a request for a 90-day extension to file a subdivision mylar. I couldn't have said it better myself, Mr. Chairman. We request uh, your <laughs> approval. Okay. <laughs> Any comments from the commissioners? Any comments from the public? This item is closed. I can have a motion. I hereby move approval of a 90-day extension for this application, which um, for, which would uh, move the Mylar filing date to um, the 28th of June, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Number two, Thomas S. Ward, trustee. You're not Thomas S. Ward. No, I am not. <laughs> I um, sound so loud, but I didn't, but I will now. I had just one, one question before we begin. I don't think Ms. Alban's um, uh, microphone was on, so should I take that responsibility tonight to remind you when your microphone's not on? <laughs> just in like case. To. And could you, if Mr. Tessie comes, could you follow him around? Yeah, look at that. Now your yeah. microphone's <laughs> off again. See? No, it was on. The red button does yeah, not. okay. Maybe just... I guess not, the red button's not working. Maybe your microphone's not working at all. In all, in all seriousness, when we get to the public hearing, if your mic's not working, we will have to give you the hand mic. Well, it is, I think hers is working now. The okay. light was off. Mr. Thomas Ward is a trustee, as the, or is the applicant by name. <clears throat> this is the um, application to provide some open space and perpetuity. In the last 10 years or so, it's been the subject of an application for four-lot subdivision, conservation zone, 100-unit development. And now what we're proposing is to give away 76,344 square feet to the Greenwich Land Trust, subject to, you know, contingent upon, of course, this approval, which we re um, refer to as a revision of lot lines, to dedicate one small parcel to the uh, southwest to uh, um, Eric and Deborah Fram Schwartz, one of the neighboring property owners, the purpose of that transfer would be to um, improve sight lines around the corner of that property, which is constrained right now by um, the curb in the road. 
The other um, parcel is uh, dedicated to Georgetown, as you know, to um, actually convey to them area that they've been using um, and is um, currently uh, um, maintained as lawn. Um, with me tonight is Mr. Richard Mancuso, who is an attorney representing the trustee of the property to confirm if you have any questions about the mechanics of how the conveyance will take place after the approval of this um, proposal. <coughs> um, there's, it has been um, approved in concept by the wetlands agency, um, which included a proposal to create a meadow on a majority of the property and basically clean up um, the area. Um, and there's a plan to create that meadow that was part of the approval and the permit that was issued. The rest of the property uh, that's highlighted in green will stay in a natural state. I anticipated that you might be concerned that it someday something would change and it might suddenly, suddenly become this, a subdivision, which is certainly not in the planning, but I did provide a note that suggests that in the future, if that were to occur, we understand that there would be a set aside of open space of the remaining parcel. Just on that note, on your drawing, <clears throat> What we have generally done on, on similar situations is that whenever a piece is, is, is uh, uh, changed in this manner, uh, we ask the open space be calculated on the original parcel size and not the reduced parcel size. So if that change could be made, since it's going not to the problem. land trust and probably will never be, <laughs> but it should be on the full parcel size. That's fine. So I'll change the note to reflect that. It, it right. makes a difference of about 2,000 square feet in open space. Right. But it will just set if it ever happens, and we hope it doesn't. I would point out also that there is a proposal to improve drainage along the road. Again, um, contingent upon the approval, we'll apply for a, um, a highway permit to make those improvements. Currently, uh, the runoff from the street dumps a lot of sand into the area, which um, settles in the pond at the northwest corner. So the objective is to create a, a curb and a basin to intercept the sand, keep it out of the, um, the pond. So that's, a, again, part of the permit that was issued by the wetlands agency. Okay. So overall, very simple proposal, um, let me, complicated. Let me just, the southwest parcel is e kind of easy because that's uh, zoned R12 now and will remain R12 when it goes. I think the zone up in the upper right-hand corner is if since it is zoned R12, but it's going to Georgetown, will it still maintain an R12 zone? Because Good right question. now it has to, I yeah. think. We, we Good question. Could Perhaps it should be, um, I don't know if you can make it as a condition or if we have to make a separate application, but that's appropriate. It is in the conservation zone. It is a part it's of the conservation. Part of conservation development, yes. Okay. So that's a good um, point. Sure. If it's surrounded on both sides by the conservation zone of Georgetown, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So when that piece gets attached to Georgetown, it'll be attached to a conservation park. Yes. As opposed to. But the zone line would not um, follow the orange line right now. Um, Good point. Hmm. I think it's probably a separate application. I kind of don't know what to do. I guess that. Not Let's do it as an R. If we do it and it remains R12, if you ever wanted to for any reason to develop, you'd have to come back right. and. And, okay, and I think that's floor, the so. way to do it because if you're going to rezone, it's a whole different notification. They were trying to keep it as simple as possible. Yep. Well, you know us, we there like are, to do it complicated as possible. There are three entities involved, so it's just it's, it's okay. complicated enough. But I think we'll leave it as 12. Yes, sir. So. Then the only other thing was that uh, Conservation had some comments regarding the two year maintenance of the meadow land. Uh, she would like to have it extended to five years. Apparently, there's a lot, in her opinion, there's a lot of invasive species there. The, the, so plan, the, the plan, of course, is to uh, um, improve that, <laughs> whatever it is. Right. The land trust has a vested interest in keeping it. Right. Um, I, understand. I don't know where That's the so, conservation okay, comments I, were during the application to the wetlands agency, but I don't think that the land trust would have a problem. We'll have to clarify that. But you want to make it a condition, I don't see a problem with it. Okay. That's, that's pretty standard course in the declaration of no. restrictions for properties that they manage. 
I just want to make an observation that the, the size of the parcels that are being transferred out of this, if, if it is approved, do not render either of the other two parcels uh, able to create additional lots. And Correct. Stuff. They are smaller than the R12, 12,000 uh, square foot requirement for a lot. And, and so to that point also, these are not, we're recognizing on the record that these are not lots being created. Right. They're parcels to be annexed to addition, to, I mean, to existing um, properties. But they are such a size that it doesn't make the one to the south uh, uh, able to resubdivide it. Correct. Again. So, <laughs> at the time that you would be filing this map on the land records, would you be filing merger maps of the simultaneously for the other, you know, for, for the other two pieces? That can be done, of course. It, was, it wasn't the intent at this time, but they can be done. You don't file a map each time. It's not. We call this a revision of lot lines. We're not right. doing a, um, a true subdivision. We're hoping that you find it to not, be not neither. a subdivision. Right. And it isn't because we're not creating right. lots. Therefore, it's a revision of lot lines, and therefore we're conveying those parcels out, and we don't intend to make a map of each one. The mapping of, of um, Georgetown would be a significant undertaking. <laughs> right. But it's, you, you have that, don't you, though? In other words, are you planning to file a map on the land records to show this revision? Because if you are, it would need to, it should include, obviously, the land that it's being we visited. Intend, is, we didn't intend to file a map. Yeah, of this is going to be filed. We want to file this map yeah. as a revision of lot lines would be the preference. Yeah. Well, I, it, we have to make a finding. It's neither a subdivision right. or a right. resubdivision, so. That's why I was hoping it was a revision if, of lot lines. And if that is the finding that you end up making, maybe you should add a note onto the plan then that makes that point abundantly clear. That Which it's, point? That it, they're not being created as separate parcels and that the intent is to merge them into the, into the other pieces. And if they... Uh, Katie, to that end, I had already anticipated that. I just said in note conveyed, number three, right. parcel S is not a building light, is to be conveyed to the Schwartz frame owners of dwelling number 45. Parcel G, not a building lot, is to be conveyed to Georgetown North condominiums. So it's clear that it's not I, building lots. I think we're good. I think that's okay. Any other comments from the commissioners? Yeah. Any comments from the public? This item is closed. Thank you. Take a motion. I hereby move approval of this application and so doing um, the finding that this is neither a subdivision nor a resubdivision. Um, uh, the following conditions shall apply to this. Uh, first, uh, the open space, if it is ever done, if an open space is ever provided on this, be based on the original lot size at this time. Um, that at this point, um, all this property will remain R12. Uh, that the uh, map contains the note that parcel S and parcel G are not building lots and that this does not create the possibility, that this application does not create the possibility of additional lots. In addition, the applicant has agreed to five years of intensive maintenance on the landscaping to ensure um, the elimination of the invasive species. And then finally, there are some notes from staff regarding some corrections that will be addressed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're really ready to go tonight, aren't you? <laughs> I am, yes. <laughs> and good evening to you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Commission. Uh, this is an application that uh, you heard in uh, December related me, just to... One second. Just one second. Um, uh, Victoria Goss is seated on this one for Mr. Levy. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Oh, and, and Mr. Yeski seated also. Yes. Okay, now we're good. And the application is for a site plan approval to allow uh, the addition of uh, 16 uh, uh, parking spaces at the bu uh, buildings located at 1445 and 1455 uh, East Putnam Avenue. And... Uh, uh, I've uh, got a, an aerial photo here to show, remind you really of where the property is. It's on the eastern end of the post road next to a large gasoline station, car wash, 
the Commons uh, development is was originally part of the uh, office complex, office building across the street, and the Hyatt Hotel uh, just a little further to the uh, to the east. Originally, when we came before this uh, commission in December, this was the plan that was presented. The goal here was to uh, put an additional uh, driveway down uh, this part of the the uh, office uh, property next to the post road. Mr. Cohen, uh, I'm, I'm, would you mind ta taking the mic? I can, I'm having difficulty hearing you, I think, cause, because the, the uh, board's on the other side. Thank you. you. Can you see this, Katie? I can see it, but I can't. I have you couldn't hear it. Yeah. yeah. A anyway, it related to the addition of 16 uh, spaces, uh, which was enabled by the addition of a uh, driveway along the uh, post road side of the property. Uh, there were a number of uh, comments from both uh, uh, this agency and Conservation Commission, which although they generally approved it, did have some comments and the leading comment uh, really related to uh, <coughs> our uh, revising the location of these spaces so as to create angled spaces rather than perpendicular spaces. This. Um, had the effect of creating additional green area and that in, in turn allowed us to prepare a much more uh, robust uh, uh, landscape plan which was uh, submitted to this commission, submitted to the uh, conservation uh, department and, and to ARC, uh, ARC and uh, um, uh, Alexander Mark approved the revisions. A uh, part of this at the um, request of uh, uh, the ARSC was to modify the uh, uh, light fixture which was done. Uh, we also submitted uh, uh, a uh, schedule showing all the existing occupancies in these two buildings and how parking was allocated to them. And we also uh, uh, filed with you a maintenance protocol showing how uh, uh, the town required uh, maintenance to be conducted for porous asphalt, which was a feature of this uh, of this application. And uh, so, uh, if you have any questions, I've got uh, the engineer and the landscape uh, architect uh, here tonight. Just just a couple of comments. Yeah. I know that staff had indicated that they want a zoning permit filed on this. Yes. Okay. One and um, two. Uh, any changes uh, to the tenancy, of course, going to more doctors or something, should be submitted for an administrative review, and if it's necessary, they'll decide if it needs to come to the commission, but I think an administrative site plan review would we understand that. Yes. suffice for that. Um, I think it's. I, I think the conservation has already commented on it, but I applaud you for the number of trees that you're putting in. That's sort of the nine that you're taking down are... I are, applaud my <laughs> client for being willing to pay for that. <laughs> Any other questions for the commission? Nope. All right. Any questions from the public? This item is closed. May I have an... I hereby move approval of this final site plan. Uh, in so doing, we note that the applicant uh, changed the parking to angled parking and was thus able to revise the landscaping versus the previous um, appearance before the commission. The um, applicant is now proposing 34 trees versus the original nine, and this landscaping, um, this revised landscaping plan has been reviewed and endorsed by both ARC and conservation. Um, we, uh, the applicant has agreed to return uh, for either administrative review or full commission review of the tenant mix changes on this property and that the applicant will obtain a zoning permit for the work to be performed on the um, site and any other relevant staff and departmental comments will apply. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Uh, this is now the um, public hearing. The first item on our agenda is 18 Parsonage Road. 
Good evening. Uh, for the record, Eric Brower on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a uh, proposal to modify and add to an existing residence. The, uh, the project uh, was first reviewed and approved by the commission back in 2008, uh, at which point the house was approved. Uh, there was a pool, terracing, a new garage, and uh, so that was, that was approved in 2008. The house itself was built, and uh, some of the terracing, uh, but the rest of it uh, did not move forward. The time period expired. We have a new owner of the property who wants to pick up where it was left off. Uh, so essentially with the uh, proposal today would be to uh, construct the previously approved garage and to add terracing to the back and add a pool and uh, cabanas uh, on either side of it. Um, slightly different than what was in the original approval, but essentially the same concept. The pool house itself though is out. Pardon me? The pool house, which was a part of the other, exactly. is out. No, no. Well, we have, these are, this one pergola is completely open. But it's in. open. Right. right. And this one uh, has a roof on it. This one just has a lattice right. roof. And this one has a roof, but is open. But it's not enclosed. Right. Okay. Right. So the only square feet, actually, that's being added is the, uh, is the garage right. itself. <clears throat> And so we've worked with, uh, I spoke with Alex back and forth today, and as well as with Patrick on her concerns about the rain garden. And uh, we're going to be modifying the bioswale that runs along here, uh, discharged from the coltex, to function as a rain garden uh, as well. So we'll be meeting with her and DPW uh, to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So you are doing the rain garden? Yes. Well, it's a okay. Okay. bioswale slash rain garden. Yeah, it was, that was what was confusing in the email chain to me, the bioswale slash, because I thought you didn't want to do it. Well, we can achieve what she wants by right. modifying it, so it, it'll work to everybody's interests. So. Okay. There was a there was a note on the, one of the landscape drawings that there are a couple of pear trees that are being removed from the town right of way. Um, oh, within the uh, the right of way. Yeah. Yeah. Any, yeah. Anything there would have to go through the uh, the tree warden, tree warden. obviously before uh, right. it could be removed. Exactly. Um, conservation. We have that. Proposal. And the kitchen break. comment. There. Oh yeah. The kitchen. Yeah. There's no kitchen. No kitchen. There's all over the drawings there's word drawing. kitchen. <laughs> so we're going to have, we'll have to deal with that. Uh, the, uh, we're going to come up with something else because we need to call it something else. Let's just, but for now, just don't call it a kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> right. So between. Outdoor, no. Well, okay. just for now, no, we'll make up something because somebody thought it would no, be better if it was called the barbecued areas, area or something. Area. We'll come up with something. So it's just. <laughs> Whatever. Pergola with permitted. <laughs> Right. We could do that. Um, I think I think we just note that the the uh, square footage that was approved under the original proposal is larger. In other words, this is not increasing any square footage; it's reducing square footage Correct. from that proposal. And the uh, although the the garage, I think there's a typo here. It's it's an increase of seven nine. It's seven ninety, not seven eighty. Um, Where? Um, well, that was still a part of the old one. Correct. That's yes. Not just, any comments from the commissioners? <coughs> Any comments from the public? And we close this item. Great. Thank you. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Tessie? <laughs> Or is he is here. <laughs> I saw him walk in. Somebody make sure he holds the mic. Who's next? Uh, n numbers nine. 9 and 10. Hearing number 9. Going once. <laughs> Going All right. twice. I move, I move we deny this application. <laughs> All right. What do they give a full professor? 10 minutes? Do we have anybody for <laughs> 15? Just thinking. 15 for a full uh, professor? 10 for a... Um, so, adjunct. Oh, he no, made it within 15 testing. seconds. He's safe. <laughs> We're done. I think we see yeah, him the rest of the evening.
they, they give the, the professors 15 minutes. We gave you 15 seconds. You made it. You were on the clock, <laughs> just to let you know. I don't see any arts and crafts, though. Well, 23 and 25, I think we almost have to take those. We did. We combined them last hearing. Yeah. yeah. So I think they should be combined because everything's just, yeah. We've got the boards. What happened to Tony? He was We're right moving at warp speed tonight. You're slowing us down. <laughs> well, with respect to 23 and 25. Well, he brings the board. I don't know where to help. You want to go grab him? Sure. Pep. Where you want to take a minute and see if you can find him? Or so, you want to Patrick? find him? He was right next to me. Here he comes. Here he comes. So I'm not the last. Wait till we get the bill. Mr. Tessie, you got the word that obviously we don't have a court reporter, so if you could um, make sure that you really do speak up. to the speak mic, up. please. Yes. I hear that every meeting. Yes. So. No, but it's important tonight. It's really important tonight. <laughs> okay. It's really important. And I understand. <laughs> and introduce go of the yourself. Microphone and wander but, off. Plus, I want everybody in the audience to hear me. So. Well, there's that, that one person thing. in there the back go. row. Okay. Mr. D'Andrea is here. We have our uh, combined site plan of 23 and 25. Uh, Woodland and the um, sorry can you just introduce Woodland yourself? Drive I introduce myself I'm Mr. Tessie John Tessie I'm here with Mr. Tony D'Andrea representing the applicants uh, on the two application with respect to 23 it's Bamsey 23 Woodland Drive LLC and with respect to 25 it is Nutmeg Realty LLC on on the board here as I um, Indicated we have a combined site plan 23 is on the lower side or the east side of the plan and 25 can for the record is on the west side uh, of the plan. These are two rectangular lots property line through the middle. The proposals on both pro properties are to develop them with a two family home on the north side or the what we call the woodland drive side and a single family home on the Rear Road Avenue side. Um, the properties, as you know, are both bifurcated by a, a zone line, GB on the south, R6 on the north. When we last uh, uh, appeared before you, the, uh, there, were, there, were, there was one main issue to be resolved for engineer, uh, with engineering department and that had to do with the um, position of the engineering department that we um, install a, uh, I'll call a, a sidewalk, because it is a sidewalk, but meeting uh, essentially the standard specifications of the DPW. And that is along Railroad Avenue in this particular zone, in the business zone, the applicants are required to install a sidewalk. This sidewalk, because of the width of Railroad Avenue at this location and the amount of pavement on it, uh, would need to be on our property as opposed to the town of Greenwich, Greenwich's property, our property meaning my client's two properties. We had to work out some shifts of buildings uh, on the properties with the help of uh, your staff so that we could uh, create some rear yard area for the two homes, two single family homes on the south side, and also uh, meet the requirements again of your uh, engineering division, specifically Mr. Uh, Jim Michael and uh, Scott Marucci. And Mr. D'Andrea was able, as you know, to accomplish that to the satisfaction of, of uh, the two engineers. Now, one of the issues here, which I believe is resolved, last comments I've seen from DPW, was that, um, was the question of ownership of the sidewalk. And there are two elements of that. One is who's going to pay for the construction of the sidewalk, and we agreed it would be the, the owners of the properties. And two would be once completed, who is going to, uh, how is the town going to control it? We suggested a, an easement uh, for the town for pedestrian uh, use of the general public. I submitted a draft easement document that com 
combine the two ownerships, granting uh, easements to the town of Greenwich using as a, a template what we've worked on before, what we used before with uh, sewer division and also DPW. And I think it's been conceptually approved, but obviously the law department would look at it and we, Tony, Tony D'Angelo will finalize a specific easement plan uh, that will be recorded in the land records once finally approved by DPW. This is a perpetual the, easement. I think one of the other things too are the cross easements that are gonna be necessary to use the driveways and the parking areas between the two properties. Yes, there will be. They haven't been submitted or anything, but they need, that would. Yeah, we, ha there, we have a cross easement now for this area, which is 10, 10 feet on either side. Uh, but you make a good point about the driveway. Um, and we can make that a condition that we'll, we'll submit a cross easement parking. Basically, it's a cross parking and access easement. We also need it for our drainage system, too. That may be a separate uh, easement. But maybe I can combine them all into one. Try to figure out a way to spend as much time on it as possible. Okay. That's a get it right. laudable goal. Um, the only other question I know of has to do, which I'm sure somebody's going to bring up, is the sewer department comments, mm. sewer division comments. Um, I reviewed them. I sent an e email to Pat. Tony can better explain it, but I don't, I, I think you, I don't know if he shared the easement, but I, I mean, I, I assume you all read the comments. Right. And the comments are, are not atypical. I mean, they are atypical. Are, are typical of generally what we we see from the sewer division. We ordinarily see two pages in recent times, and really, at the end of the day, what Mr. Uh, Feminella uh, stated was that our engineer should arrange a meeting after having done specific inspections. Of, by professionals of the sewer lines with uh, Mr. Feminella to work out the plans for providing sewer lines to each of, of the properties. They're identical, as you know, they're identical comments in both. So specifically, what, what I note from his uh, comments well, there's the one about the six. You you you're coming the, out of this the eight, property. The eight going eight. into the six. Yeah, it's not a problem because uh, well, but no, 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 no. Let me let me let me rephrase email, what I'm saying. The email from this afternoon from yeah, Rich. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Okay, from so Ri from Rich Feminella. So he says he has capacity downstream sewer system capacity concerns. What he's saying is this. And that he and and Patrick. And Patrick and I went back and forth about this this evening because I found the last email a little hard to understand because he said it had to be addressed during the PNC PNZ stage. And I said, what the heck does that mean during the PNZ stage? Look, and what Patrick says that means is? Well, yeah, it, it, there was an earlier email chain to that right. email. And what I asked specifically, the question was, does this need to be addressed now in the P and Z phase or with the permit phase, and his response back there was the P and Z phase Look, stage. Excuse so me. he's telling us. Uh, so while so he's saying prior to final prior to site plan approval. Correct. Correct. Well, we disagree. We're going to disagree. There's no more time. Well, you have until the 23rd. No, yeah. We, so we, we could we, do we, it we, next. We want next approval meeting. tonight. I think we're entitled to an approval tonight. I think there hasn't been one time, let, let me just, first of all, let me digress to what I was saying, and I defer to you. What he states at the end of the day, please coordinate with the sewer division to discuss how, not if, how to connect to the town sanitary sewer main. That's what he states, and that's perfectly acceptable. There isn't one thing he's written in here that we are looking to argue against. We're aware of the eight going into the six, Fine. I get We're that. aware of every issue. And we had a but huge at the end of the day, well, no, my point is this. You have to make a decision, right. okay, of whether or not it means anything to you. And my point is, I don't know what it means to you. If it were a drainage issue, I get that. There are neighbor issues you'd logically be concerned about, downstream issues you'd be concerned about. When it comes to a sewer line, the only thing that matters to you that the sewer department issues a permit. It's put in the sewer department hand. They're either going to issue a permit or they're not. 
I'm perfectly comfortable to state from a zoning standpoint that you specifically condition the approval, if I can be presumptuous, you'll approve it, but assuming you approve the applications, that you'll condition the approval on there will be no issuance of a zoning permit for either parcel until we have sewer permits for the two properties. Because that means is that we can't go to the building department without a zoning permit. We can't go anywhere. And to me, that satisfies the spirit of the issue. Because you're concerned we don't want to get point position where we approve something that can't be built. Fine. Hey, Mr. Condition Tessie. it on, on, on a zoning permit. Mr. Tessie. Yes, I, Mr. Levy. Would you be able to give us an idea of ways that you could satisfy the situation? Yes. That, that, that was so that, the, so that we know, oh, well, there's a myriad of different ways to solve yeah. this. Tony, the Tony's Pumps, the whatever they are, Absolutely. kind of thing. Yeah, so, it's not a pump then, issue. Then Tony will I think that's it. a good Downstream thing to put on the record. Good. Tony. No, I know, but the email came For the record, we should state that there's virtually no sewer system in uh, Woodland Drive. So that pumping up or going out to Woodland is a, a non-issue. It can't be done. Mr. Right. Dandere, can you just state seconds. your name on yes. the record? Tell him you're Tony Dandere. Yeah, I will. Sorry, okay. I didn't get a copy of this late email here. The I'm sorry, it, was, it, was, it came to us at the end of the day, so it was emailed out. Do you I want to just I'm read it into the record? O'clock. No, it's 4 o'clock. <laughs> Impossible. My, this is dated 2.56 p.m. Um, and 3.34 p.m. <clears throat> so um, no, I take it back. Commission. Oh, you have Hold it. Hold on. Uh, Patrick says, sends it to us. It's at 4.42. Correct. It says, it says um, from Carol Mandris, it says I, um, that this is a tricky spot and the downstream sewer system has capacity concerns, which is what we were trying to understand yesterday is what is the sewer department asking about? So now, I'm sorry, Mr. DeAndrea, for the interruption. Hey, no problem. My name is Tony DeAndrea, and I'm the um, professional engineer working on the site design, which has had some interesting challenges that we've met and accomplished, and we now have a very good plan. But the issue regarding the sanitary sewer has been addressed in several notes on the plan, and we recognize that Mr. Feminella has been basically unavailable for about six weeks, and we. Um, um, sympathize with his condition, his situation, but um, resolving minor details has often been difficult. On our plan, we have specified that right now we have four units of, of service on the property. We're proposing a total of six, it's not something that would break the bank. What we notice is that we have the commercial building to the, to the uh, west being serviced, as are the buildings on the property. They all feed into a six-inch line. So we proposed in our notes in response to the comments initially made by Mr. Feminella to inspect the line, work with the sewer department to determine whether or not he wants us to replace the line or use it or another, in some other way um, uh, sequence the flow out. It's very simple. The, the idea is that we would replace this line into the manhole, which is um, very close to our property. But the question is whether or not he wants us to go back and replace the entire line serving the commercial property, or does he want us to go farther downstream because he implied that there might be a problem downstream. I mean, but the reality of it is we're adding only two units to, this, to the system. It's not an overload. But Mr. Dandre, you, you have to go through this process with, this, with Mr. Feminella to get a permit. Yes, absolutely. Correct? So coming back to a meeting in two weeks, I'm Doesn't not seeing the hardship to do that when you have to go through the process of getting this plan updated and approved for Mr. Feminella, whether it's right now, whether it's in two weeks, or whether it's a month when you try to get the permit. So coming to another meeting, I don't see how that's an, an, Doesn't help us an imposition on you. The, the process with the sewer department is um, iterative. <laughs> we submit, we wait. We try to get a meeting, we discuss, we finally resolve it. That's the way it works. And can't you do that within the next two weeks? I mean, You cannot get a sewer permit from Mr. Feminella in two weeks, no matter what you do. 
No, we would so, ne we never do, uh, we never require them to have a permit. But, but what I'm it's saying though is, it's they can they it, it's not going to get resolved tomorrow. It'll be resolved within the next two weeks. So my po my point is, I'm not I'm not understanding the hardship from them when they need to get it resolved through Mr. Feminella. No, just I think we to tripped, to he tripped meeting. up and I felt I did too on the word permit. Yeah, we we don't have we, to have a permit. We can't get a permit. Right, but uh, my but point is he would not have okay. gotten the yeah. permit within two weeks. That's exactly the point. So so considering that we have a meeting on the 21st in two weeks, I don't see how them coming back with a conceptual resolution for Mr. Feminella is a hardship. I mean, he's not going to get the permit anyway within the next two weeks. That, that's my only point. It may not be a hardship, but it's no, it's no further productive. It, the question is, Richard, do you want us to play, replace the entire line, or do you have another item that you want us to do? That's all. It hasn't said that. We've met with him. Let me just explain no, something else so about I, this area. Let, let me ask a simple question. Yes, sir. He brought this issue up in his November 9th That's correct. meeting. He's been when did you submit changes to we haven't address? Mr. Fox, we haven't submitted any Why changes. Because, because we haven't been able to get a meeting. Mm -hmm. Since November 9th. Let me say one other thing about what we've done here. Just, yeah. just for, you, since November 9th, you're yes, telling sir. me he refused to meet. No, he didn't refuse to meet. We have, what we've so, been, so I again, I'm going to ask you very mm -hmm. clearly, why didn't you address his comments for November 9th? I'm going to give you an answer. There are other things that have been going on in this project. One, major shift of the buildings, reduction, reduction of parking. We're still wanting the commission to approve the site plan with the buildings as they're configured with the parking so we can go on and finalize the design. That's the answer. The, 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 the issue is clear. So we have a six inch line on the street. Do you want us to replace it? If you want it replaced, we'll replace it. Otherwise, it's not an issue to be concerned about that we're taking an eight-inch main to handle the six units and bringing it down the property and into Railroad Avenue. Ultimately, we're going to have to handle the sewer. Otherwise, we can't get a building permit. Now, in addition, we understand okay. that. But you put us in an awkward position because it's been on his table in the public record since November 9th. And it's been the issue, and it said downward flow, and it, he was concerned with the eight and the six. And, and, it's, and now you're asking us, this is the last issue, and we tried to get it resolved today because he was out of the office, and he gave us a response Quick that response. doesn't allow us to approve this tonight. That, I'm sorry, but that's, that's not true. That's a, he, what's his email? He does not have... Let's, Let's be clear about this, Mr. Fox, and this is one of the problems I've had for years. You make your decisions, okay? You can choose to defer to him. You can choose to defer to anyone. But in terms of making decision, it's, your, it's yours. He can only give you comments. And plus, this can't be built without him being happy. Totally understand. Right. So my point is, there isn't a time when we obtain an approval and, and there isn't one time that I recall when we've obtained approval <laughs> recently, and Mr. Feminella has written his two-page comments that you haven't ended when your, your deliberations with the comment that and satisfied all the requirements of the various departments per their, per their, com per their comments or their reports. My only point is, this is really not your issue, nor have you ever really taking it up in this type of project. The issue is whether or not he can be satisfied to issue a sewer permit. He, and he, even in his own words, he said, this is a question of how you're going to do it. So my point to you is that it's up to you. You want to leave it open, you're certainly free to leave it open. The truth of the matter is, there's no way, given those requirements, if you look, look at them, what he wants, that they can all be accomplished, particularly at this time of the year, because he wants inspections, he wants camera review, he wants analysis. It's not going to get done in the next two weeks. Well, and they have, but, but at the end of the day, he actually controls. It's up to him. He, his division controls the issue. So I was just trying to say, as I was saying earlier, look, it's really an issue for him. So, but if it makes you comfortable because you want, you, you feel you, you want to, you know, that it's your approval and you want to have skin in the game or whatever phrase you want to use, fine. Not then condi then condition, your, condition the issuance of a zoning permit mm -hmm. on the issuance of a sewer permit. 
You've never once ever conditioned a, a, an application uh, uh, approval on the issuance of a sewer permit, but I could see in this instance, no, and you know, just to move it along, yep. that you conditioned, which you have in the past, there's not going to be a sewer, there's not going to be a zoning permit until something's satisfied. But I don't want to beat it to death. If you know, the, the truth of the matter is, the big urgency here has to do with time requirements on two contracts, and our client right now is in a penalty phase because it's dragged on a bit. In other words, it's costing him more to pay the seller. Um, and we can't close until there's a decision made and, there, and the 15-day appeal period has run. So it's an economic issue that's, that's costing our clients, our client thousands more of more dollars to drag it on. So I'm saying if you're otherwise comfortable, that's really the reason. That just stops the clock. He buys the property and then he has to work it out with Mr. Mr. Feminella. But that's really what's going on on that issue. Mr. D'Andrea. Um, Mr. Feminel's notes from uh, November 9th talk about um, capacity at Arch Street. Uh, have you looked into that issue at all? Are you confident of any of the problems with the capacity issue in Arch Street, which is off the property down the block? It's quite far removed from, from this property. Right. I think it, it comes down almost to the crux of this issue is that he's talking about, and then the email that we got today was about a capacity issue. Um, and I think it's the capacity down at the corner. So if we're talking capacity at the issue, uh, is the issue at Arch Street, we have to consider how much is actually flowing into Arch Street. He knows that, that this is not something that will impact that. He recognizes that he has a problem. Yes. We can't solve that problem. Right. Our problem is to take this um, six units, increasing by two on the property, and decide how far down he wants us to replace the six-inch line. That's all it comes down to. Okay. You, I think the commission recognizes that the, the, sewer commission, the sewer department's problem at Arch Street is not our problem. We cannot solve that problem. But you can provide to Mr. Fermanello's office uh, the information to... Uh, what he has to assess is whether or not these additional two units is going to adversely impact his problem, right. which he has not given to us as exactly what that is. Okay. Can I stop you there? Yes, sir. Will you count for me where those six units are? Or the, or the four units currently are? There's only two buildings on these properties. Yeah, right. The, two to the best of my knowledge, are two two-family homes. Is that correct? Yes. Well, I can tell you, well, I can tell you from your existing survey, there's one dwelling, number 23, which is on uh, Woodland, and there's the other dwelling, which is 25, which is down on Railroad. If those are two-family, that's four. Yes, sir. Where's the other two? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. So they're two family houses. Yeah, they're both two family, so there's yes. four units. Two, four. four. So we're doing two, two four, four six. Five, six. Yeah. Okay. So four existing and six proposed. You I thought you said right. so there were two buildings up at, okay. No, it's so two, two additional units. Right. <clears throat> Are these both, quote, legal <coughs> two family dwelling units? Just curious. Um, well, we did municipal searches, and they, they're, they're shown to be okay. two-family units. Um, the, right. the zoning would have permitted to, so for a long time. I misunderstood you when you... That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. D'Andre, just to continue real quickly. Could you have them convert, um, he's he's no? clearly no. needs to have this uh, capacity issue looked at. Uh, from his point of view, correct. Um, he's looking for specific information from your office uh, so he can actually study the problem. Has that information been collated and provided to him yet? No. Not in specific response to that. We're not in position to go out and meter his mains if that's what he wants us to do. I think do. it's more of actually the capacity coming off of here into his mains. Exactly. So what we're proposing here is two additional units, and the questions that we've answered on the plans that he's reviewed are, do you or do you not want us to replace the line? That's all it comes down to. Can I ask you another yes, sir. question? What about the six, the eight-inch pipe going into a six-inch pipe? Have you reduced? That's not that's not a problem <laughs> hydraulically, but we we've noted that already that we're bringing down an eight-inch main in the property because we're bringing individual laterals, and he likes to have that. It's, Typically, yeah, I, he likes to have every unit have a separate lateral to the main. That's not possible here. Right. So we recognize that. We propose a single main right. with manholes at each end. In fact, three manholes on that line. We need him to confirm that that's okay. He hasn't done that yet either. So we're both at fault for not following through. There have been some logistical problems with just 
having him available as we finalized this plan after we moved all the buildings and changed all the design. Well, he was quite specific when you go, when he, when he spoke, when, his, when the earlier memo says an eight to a six. So yes. I'll just ask you the simplest yes, sir. question. Yes, sir. We're going to replace would it. You, would you, would it, just to be simple to answer that one yes. specific question, would you be willing to commit to changing to yes. a six inch line coming out of your property? Absolutely, if he wants us to. Typically, he wouldn't want us to well, do that. Well, he commented on it in writing. Yep. So. We're willing to do whatever he wants us to do. That's the whole point. We have to get a permit at the end of the day. We're going to get a permit. There is no other solution to this problem. We have to be served. He has a responsibility no. to provide the sewer to us. I understand that. but. We, the two things, apparently capacities and that other comment right. that you've just answered, that you were willing to convert this eight inch line to a six inch Within line. Within the property if necessary. If that's yes. If that's what he wants you to do. No problem. You gotta, you gotta speak in Can you start that over? Six inch upgraded to an eight inch. Probably, that's probably, let's face it, that's probably what he's gonna yes. ask for. And you would be willing to do that. You're gonna have no yes. choice, exactly. Okay, ordinarily so in these projects like this, I've done enough of them, what happens is we do the four inch laterals and two and eight. We sign, he has a specific declaration, gets recorded in the land records so that the properties that all connect are all co-responsible for the, uh, the maintenance of the main. That's one of his standard requirements. I've done it a number of times. Um, but he's... I think we all know he's never going to agree to an eight inch going into a six. Okay. So, so Tony's going to talk to him to see if he'd agree, <coughs> since there are relatively few units, a six into the six. That's about the only discussion they're going to have, and Rich is going to rule. I think we all know how he's going to rule. But. Well, how's he going to rule? You said he's going I think to he's say, going to go eight. Say, I think he's going to go eight to eight myself. So he's going to ask you to replace that six inch pipe down along Railroad Avenue. Unfortunately, most to, probably, but if not, then the eight on the property is going to get reduced to a six. It's going to be his call. That's basically no, the No, I understand. Call. That's yeah, right. A, B. Right. You're willing to do either A or either B. We don't have a choice. No, I'm just saying that's... If you want us to try to decide this. No, no, the answer is we're going to do whatever. Rich, this is why I said it's relatively simple. No, I understand that, but we're I'd going like to do to anything that Rich Feminella demands in order for our, for our client to get um, sewer permits for both of these properties, or they will not get developed. So he All controls right, so the situation. A, you are willing to commit to changing your eight inch line to a six. Yes. Or B, you're willing to replace the six in the street to an eight. Yeah. Or C, anything else that he may require. There you go, bingo. That's well, basically it. Anybody? Um, I want to come back to the to the easy to the town right away thing. Um, Marucci had originally told you, Patrick, that he wanted to see a draft. Of right. He's given us a, his okay and, and to that. Already, he, we have a memo from him. And, and Mr. So Tessie has provided a draft. Yeah, that's and, what I said earlier. And Mr. Marucci has it's amended his comments. All right, so I'm left with a sewer issue. So there's there's one other issue, which is the um, the sanitary sewer manhole cannot be constructed in the town right of way. Number three, that's moved that's moved up and outside of the right of way, right? The, the addition issue. that the sanitary sewer for the manhole. connection cannot be in the town right of way. That was his comment. It won't be in the town right away. It'll be in there right away, won't it? If it's the, the sanitary sewer can't be in the town right away. The no, the it says man the manhole. The sanitary manhole, <laughs> if it's on the town main, it has to be in the town right away. He said he. I'm reading from his comment. It says, in addition, a sanitary sewer manhole, um, the number three, cannot be constructed in the town right of way. So it's just illogical. Sorry, on the record, it's illogical. The main that services other properties is located in Railroad Avenue. There's no other way to make a connection. Well, but he doesn't want this one. If he doesn't want the manhole in the street, then it goes on our property to go under a sidewalk. That's just not going to happen. And you have to relocate the sewer. That's not what our intent is. Our intent is to replace the sewer with the proper size as, as um, required by uh, the sewer department. But the sewer is currently in the right-of-way. With existing manholes. There are no manholes, Mr. Fox, okay? 
The, the next manhole is down serving the condos and other properties across the street, the commercial buildings. They all come into this manhole. But that manhole is in the town right away. Yes, sir. That's south of our point property. point is yes. it is standard. East of our property, excuse me. It's here, and we're going to take that out and replace that line by, with a manhole because we have to pick up another property to the west. And assuming you would need a highway permit to do that regardless. Same thing. It's just like the sewer permit. We can't do the construction unless we get the permits that are required. Highway permit, sewer permit, building permit. Those are all come later. Sanitary sewer manhole, SSM, H number three. Number three. Yeah. Cannot be constructed in the town. Is this on the record? Because if, if so, can you repeat that, please? The town right uh, the town right away. So we'll respond to it. It, it cannot be any other way. Well, uh, Mr. Dandrea, which would, number three is is uh, going from right to left on the page? Is the Sanitary manhole number three is the farthest. Is the farthest south. Okay. It's indicated on the plan. Can you speak into the microphone, please? The, the sanitary sewer manhole three is shown to the south of the right of way. You, you remember that the right of way here for this building, which sits right, number 25, sits right on the road, up on the elevated wall that supports it. So the right of way makes a jog as you head west. It jogs west. I mean south, about 10 feet, and then continues west before it jogs back in to the face of the uh, hardware store building. The line that serves that um, hardware store building can't go through our property. It goes just outside based on the markings that we have. Therefore, our proposal was to build a manhole on that. What are the other options? If we have a, an eight-inch main, you can bring an eight-inch main down and do a, a lateral connection with a T. So that could be done if Mr. Feminello wants that. But because there are six units coming into that line, I don't think that that would be the appropriate approach. You want to be able to have an inspection. If he wants a T, we'll make a T. But it's unusual that you would have a multifamily without a manhole. So we showed a manhole. Scott suggested that it shouldn't be there. Then I guess we'll have to get Scott and Richard together and decide um, who's right. We can easily eliminate the manhole if that's what they want. No, because you got to have a clean. Well, we out. can't be whipsawed between them. You got for clean out, right? That's rich. That's the reason we have a second manhole, number two, is because there's a change in grade. The, the property drops significantly across, as we as we know, there's about 12 feet drop. So in order to make that drop, you have to do it in a manhole. You can't have a, an abrupt drop. So we have a sloping manhole, a sloping uh, sewer to a manhole, a drop, and then horizontal out to the main, which we intend to replace. And it's all documented in notes as to how we propose to do it. We just need to get the permit for it, which is typically done after approval of the site plan, so we can finalize all of the construction and architectural drawings. That's just the way it's done. So, Was it your feeling that from, from the... Uh, discussions or did anybody discuss these memos with with rich so based upon your reading of these memos is it your opinion that he would be comfortable if we approve this tonight with conditions or do you, is it your feeling that he wants this he wants to take a crack at it before we decide oh, I will I think all of these things his issue is he wants to make sure that he, the things that he wants, that the applicant is going to agree to. That's why he's saying that he wants it to be handled at this stage, because he wants to ensure that there's no I, I problem. Gave, I gave an A, B, C. His answer was he wants it before final site plan approval by us. That's and the, what I clarified with Patrick this evening. I wrote back to Patrick and I said I don't understand what he means by the P and Z stage. And Patrick answered me he wants it before we do the final site plan approval. Right, and I'm, ex and I'm saying that the reason that he wants all of those things and having dealt with him on many of these types of scenarios is because he wants to ensure he has leverage because obviously the applicant is trying to get the approval. So in order to get the approval, the plan needs to be at, to the satisfaction of Mr. Feminella. So it's easier for him, of course, to have it be through this commission and, and for him to be able to work with the applicant. 
to your point, you've just gone through all of the series of, of issues that Mr. Yes. Feminel has raised, and the applicant stated on the record that they, they will do it. that they feel they, they can satisfy whichever scenario Mr. Feminel wants them to go with. Right. But that still leaves me with the issue that I raised on a different application at the last meeting, which is that we're working very hard to make this commission be consistent and predictable in the way we make our decisions. And as Mr. Tessie himself said, he doesn't recall us approving an application prior to, to sewer sign off no, that's recently. Not, that's well, you would be correct. Sorry, that's not what I said. Well, you would I, be correct if you had said that, because you would be right. Because no, I, I go. Sewer never signs. Well, let's be clear. Sewer never, quote, signs off. What Sewer does is list a bunch of conditions which require a lot of investigation. Right. Every time. Yes. And in. At the end of the day, what you say is that we have to satisfy those sewer conditions. That's what I said. Uh, and, and the fact that Rich unfortunately said, well, I want it, he used the phrase, dealt with at this time, to me meant we never, we never agreed to the conditions. Essentially, that's what Katie's saying. So we're saying for the record, look, we'll agree to the conditions. And I was adding the other point that if, if there's some concern as expressed by you that this is the leverage point, or the case of that, so, the leverage point is for you to condition the zoning permit right. on a SOAR permit, but to which your, is the way it should be all the time, far as I'm what, concerned. Well, that would be, and see, if we were gonna consistently apply a different way of approaching this to all applicants, I'd be fine with that. And if that's what my fellow commissioners would wanna do, I'd be okay with that, but the truth is, we don't normally give a go-ahead to somebody given the nature of the comments that we have in front of us at this point. We just don't. And I know we don't, and I've been here for 11 years, and I can tell you that we. Well, that I have gone kicking and screaming every time that I've been able to that we have to be consistent, that you guys have to know that we will observe protocol and we will do the same thing so that we're predictable for you, so that we're known if, following the rules if, quantity for you. If you look back, if you want to look back at, at the Harbor project, uh, the Monero parking lot project. I was not here for the, over the Monero parking lot, okay. Okay, Monero parking lot project. There were a list of conditions, plus we had to move the sewer line. And at the end of the day, it was, a, it was agreed that basically, because nothing was finalized, but it was agreed with Mr. Feminella. We agreed. agreed. Oh well, we had to do, we had to do flow monitor, monitoring, flow monitor. There was never, there was never an absolute. And the reason I'm bringing this up is this: there was never really an absolute that we were going to get a sewer permit. It could have turned out the flow was just so bad, or we had to. And we, that the expense of doing it could have been horrible, and it just wasn't going to get done. But at that, which is why I'm a little uh, um, perplexed as to why in this particular instance he made the comment he made, because that was a much more complicated <laughs> situation. Well, I think the situation's gotten worse, and we, and, I, we didn't and have so, a consent decree at the time that that, I mean, we did not have the issues with sewer capacity back then that we have now. Oh, yes, we did. It was, oh, yeah, it was oh. even worse, especially that line. And well, that line was going through people's have, backyards. I know we did not. Well, I, the, but at the, the end other of the day. But in any event, coming back the, to, go ahead, Katie. And well, I was just going to say, I mean, the, the reason that we get all these comments is we want to ensure that there's, that the, the plan is far enough along that that any detail that needs to be worked out isn't going to create a redesign of a project. So when you look at the drainage situation, if it's a matter of, of moving the elevation of, a, of something, that, that's one thing. But if it's something where it's a rain garden versus a coal tech or something of that magnitude that may end up um, changing the location of buildings or, or tree removal or something that may impact the neighbors, and that's that's something different. So therein lies the question for you: is taking all of these comments and trying to figure out how much of them will re or could redesign a project and, and the layout of the site plan. I mean, that's really what you're looking at here. So what you have to what you have if, to if that's determine. The, but if that's <laughs> the standard, I, I think Mr. Tessie did that in the beginning. He said it's, it's underground. Sorry. <laughs> it's not going to change the site plan, but that was a very good. Here. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, uh, does anybody think that if 
again, I go to A, B, C. If that six becomes an eight or the eight becomes a six, I can't conceive of how that would change the layout of this site. Does anybody feel differently about that? There's a capacity concern. Just bear with me a minute. Uh, but on that, if there's a capacity concern no, and he won't it, issue again, a permit for six the units and he's not going to issue a permit. Uh, uh, quells all those issues that, that the sewer department may have. And um, if they're not able to satisfy the sewer department, then obviously they're not going to go forward. So I don't see but an they, issue. The thing is, they've, willing, they've, will, they've agreed tonight to do those things. And, and what I'm saying is, if they, whether it becomes an 8-inch pipe in the street and it runs for 10 feet, 20 feet, or 90 feet or something, doesn't affect this site plan. <coughs> doesn't affect the number of units. What would affect the number of units is that in the end they don't have the flow capacity to handle it and they would have to come and take a unit away or something. But then they'd have to come back to us with a new site plan. I think we, but that's uh, exactly right. But that's not what we're here to do and that's not how we, we don't normally say, okay, so we're going to approve this, but then if it doesn't work out, you can come back with a new site plan because we're not sure it's going to work out. That's we're not, not how, saying that. We're not saying that. Saying that's just, that's just, just the default very, position. I feel very strongly that we have been super consistent about certain things as much as we can in the last year or so and I'd like to stay with that that us be consistent and that people know what we're going to do even if they get mad at us when we're doing it that they can predict us that if now if our process is wrong and we should approve people even when Rich is raising capacity concerns then fine I'm okay with that as long as we agree that we're going to treat everybody the same way but I want to treat everybody the same way Mr. Well, DeAndre, I'm saying. Mr. As I, DeAndre, said uh, I have a question for Mr. DeAndre. Uh, um, after your connection of the six units and I guess it's the Greenwich Hardware Building, um, is anything else connected to that private sanitary line from there down to Arch Street? What we what we know is that the um, he's asking how many units are connected to. Don't it. know. That's what he's asking. Well, no, what? that's not what he's asking. What he's asking is he thinks he has a problem down at the Art Street. That's not our problem. He says, please tell us how many how many units are connected. He knows how many are, are, are he connected. He should know how many are connected. Let's put he it that way. in the memo how many units. He should know how many are connected because he controls the permits. We don't have that information. We have to go to his records to find out. We can work with him to do that. But the reality of it is this building, the hardware store building is connected. We've also learned that the building to the west here goes out to the west down through private properties and out and he's got problems over there we learned about those on field point 187 and 191 field point road we didn't have any permits when you approved that we were going to resolve those because that sewer went through private property we would have to fix that you didn't approve it um, mm -hmm. you know contingent on having a permit in advance Richard knows that there are problems in the area with the sewer infrastructure ultimately the town has to provide that to okay. us. What I'm, what I'm reading here on his because November. doesn't have to provide you six units. No, sir, that's correct. But we also know that so two units is not going to break the, 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 the capacity. That's where you're getting yourself on a tangent. The town does not guarantee you the right to connect six units. Not six units, but they have the, okay, we so have to be able to connect to the sewer because of, this, because of the zone that's here. Let, let's just go and focus one more one, on one more comment. The practicality of how these things are designed can change a lot. Mr. Feminella is not inclined, I don't believe, to be giving multiple permits for the same project. If we were to have modified the buildings or changed the way the laterals come out, that's impractical. The permits require all of this to be part of the plan, and we always pursue those after the approval. That's the way it's always been done. We never come there. I just inherited a subdivision today from another consultant. There wasn't a bit of drainage um, solved. There wasn't a bit of sanitary sewer on it, yet it was approved, and it was done within the last 12 months. And I'll bring you the plan. So this is typical of what we do. We design the plan, we get the permits, we work with Mr. Felmanella to design those things. It's, as Mr. Uh, Tessie pointed out on the, on the harbor, that was a major job. At the time, it was um, 12 units. It was ended up being 11, I believe. We moved the main, a large main that was going to the pump station. None of that was worked out before we came, be, before we had the approval. No, but I wasn't in the commission. Not for that one. Not something unusual about this. For the this original problem, Monero's. Mr. Jader, as as I was asking before, 
the new, new line, you're coming out, uh, picking up Greenwich Hardware, these six units, and then it's going down the street. Before it hits uh, the main in Arch Street, does it pick anything else up? We believe that the, the, the line um, takes the condominiums to the east of this project. Okay. And then it continues on. Right. We don't know if, if they, we number. know that the, those condos don't all come into this manhole, mm -hmm. but they come into the line farther down to the best of our knowledge. Okay. Because it, if reading his November 9th comments, um, uh, you need to work with the engineer to determine which property owners are connected to the private sanitary sewer lateral and confirm the sanitary sewer up to the connection, up to the connection in our street has sufficient capacity. If that the, the private sanitary sewer does not have enough capacity for everything that's hooked to it, if it actually includes those others, would the applicant be prepared to actually repair that to Mr. Feminella's uh, uh, satisfaction? I think that this is, that's a variation of what was said earlier. If he's going to require an increase from the six inch, right? Uh, so the eight inch. Six inch, eight inch, does, I don't want to know, talk about details. No, the answer is. about yes. from Greenwich Hardware all the way down to Arch Street. If he says replace the whole thing. We said earlier. You're going to do that. We have no choice. No, that, was a, that was B in the choices. Okay. <laughs> That's the okay. point. We've already agreed to that. We have no choice. All the way down. I th that, that would resolve it. Okay. We have to work with Mr. Feminella. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, the DPW, Mr. Fem Feminella, if we sometimes, we, he, he'll say, can we have a larger discussion of the issue? You see, I, I view his memo to say, as I, as I quoted earlier, and I take seriously what he wrote. He wrote, we have to discuss how we're going to have this prop these properties served uh, by a sanitary sewer main. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And my view is what, the same view you have as you read it, He's concerned about capacity. The capacity is not in the main on, on Arch, Arch Street. Street. It's about the capacity of the, the main down. within yeah. Railroad Avenue to get to Arch Street because yeah. it's only six inches. And we're okay if he says replace the whole thing. Well, we prefer Hardware he wouldn't say down. that because it goes to client agreed. money. But they I don't. To do okay. that. But it's his his call, and that's what we're expecting. You, he'll he's not going to take an eight inch main across the front of your property and then go back to the six inch in the he's street. He's going to require gonna an eight, eight and, and he said, by the way, <coughs> he's going to say, keep on going. Right? Well, he's, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, we're all saying the same thing. We all agree. That's most likely what he's going to say. If he doesn't, that's his call. That's what, how I'm reading That was C. The line. <laughs> that was C. And plus anything else, I think was yeah. C. All of the above. <sighs> right. And you could think of something between now and then, by the way, and because it's all a function of what he requires to have a permit issued. Whether I, he wrote whatever he wrote to you. I think it just in, in the final point, you know, Ms. Alvin, the real problem is there's no way in the next two weeks that we can get done, all that Tony will say this, schedule and get done, because actually he wants, I think there's something in there, but he oh, wants an observer there. My only point is simply this. So we do that all the time. We can't. I mean, let's just hold on a second, because we do that all the time. We approve you before the close, the close um, inspection. We do approve, I mean, he, He's, right. he's got a whole bunch of boilerplate conditions about the CCTV and blah, 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 and that we approve on. But when he raises certain types of concerns, that's our red flag, and I'm really stuck on that. When okay. he well, I'm not going to beat it, I'm not gonna beat it to says, death anymore. I have a downstream capacity concern. I'm a red flag, and that's it. Because he, didn't say he no. does. He said he can pass he does. In, in the email today, he's, there is uh, Mandras writes. There is a downstream capacity. This is a tricky location, and there is a downstream capacity concern. Correct. And, that, down, and as they explained and more in the, back in the and memo. And he answers, and he says he wants this address prior to P&Z approval. Now, when he says something like that, what I always... What does he mean by addressed? What, what do you think he means? Well, normally he leaves a whole lot of boilerplate things that can't, you know, the CCTV and blah, blah, blah. But he says, we've discussed this with the applicant. The kind of memo we get from him is we've reviewed this with the applicant and this is how it's going to be fixed. And we're good to go uh, based on a plan that's ahead of us. And that's what we normally do. But and that's what he's looking for. That's what he asked us for late this afternoon. No, and he said he I'm, didn't have the memo. No, no, keep going. I'm, too, I'm reading it. 
you know, and then go up one, and then it, he it, says he doesn't have. And then he goes back further up from Patrick. It says I would prefer to address have this addressed during the PNZ review or during the PNZ stage. Right. He which would is prefer what to have. Patrick ha was clarifying. He, he says that my point is when he says that. I feel strongly about respecting it. That's the precedent and the consistency that I strive for. You guys don't agree. I'm good. But I feel very strongly about that, and I'm stuck on it. Well, Could you convert to a preliminary? Obviously, we have to absolutely ask. Absolutely not. Do anything Absolute, absolutely and not. Get no, through that, that, there's not even, I, there's I, not even, I understand no, you have Mr. Issue. Mr. Orlando will lose tens of thousands of dollars. It's not happening. This is we spend way too much time on this. You decided what you want to do. Okay. Miss, we are entitled to rely upon what Mr. What Mr. Uh, uh, what, what Mr. Fene Feminella wrote down. It made total sense everything he said, and we have agreed to everything, knowing it's going to be. He's going to have to spend more money, our client, because we're going to have to replace that. And I think it's crystal clear, as pointed out by Mr. Macri and acknowledged by Mr. Maitland. And Mr. Levy, that the capacity issue here, Mr. Fox, has to do with the private line that, that's downstream, that's going down to Art Street. That's the downstream he's talking about. We're certainly not for two units going to replace the main in Art Street. He's never going to require that. And he specifically said, it, it said, as I said earlier, he's talking about discussions about how we're going to handle this. And we basically said, see anything you want. Okay. I mean, Thank I, you. I mean, there's you may no not have a problem. So, Let's see. I think we're ready here. Yeah, we're done. I'm done. I mean, you know how I feel. I know. I know how you guys feel. It's good. Okay. Anybody, any other <laughs> questions from the commission? Any questions from the public? Okay, is it the <coughs> desire of the commission to close this now? Yes. Well, that would be the problem because I wouldn't want to close it, but I think you're going to have to go against one commissioner in this. Everybody. I think everybody else wants to close. Dennis is. Dennis, Dennis is seated. I want to close. For who? For Peter. For the for the oh. for the vacated. <laughs> oh. no, well, it was actually for the vacated seat, seat before Mr. Macri came. Victoria and Dennis sorry, were I, both I, seated on this, as I remember. No, they? no, 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 no Dennis. 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 Yes, Mr. I missed that. I'm sorry. So close, close. I think you Peter, close, close. I think you're going to have to go ahead and close. Okay. Let me just go back and see this, just so I got it right. Okay, so we'll close it. We combine the records. We're yes. going to do policy now. Um, I just think. Sh shall I begin? Oh, let me just introduce oh, you. Oh, okay. The item is number 11. Okay. Network Development well, Company. Did you guys, you didn't ask about your wall on the last one. It's, it's done what's closed. The wall. What, okay, you wanted to ask wall? if ARC had That's looked closed. at the treatment on the wall. I forgot to remind everyone. Yes, they, as a matter of fact, they have. Okay. If, if you read their memo, All right, they have they've commented. I just had a note from yesterday, and I just want to make sure that Nick got his question answered. Well, I don't want I don't want this going in the record. I was just going to say this part is not on the record because you have you've closed, closed the item. I know that. Yeah. I just can I still answer her question? No, no, leave it. It's fine. Right. I not public. Not and follow the rules. Okay, we're now ready for number 11. The 66 and 68 Halsey Drive. Okay, on this one, <laughs> The regulars are seated. The regulars? <laughs> the regulars. Um, okay, for the record, my name is John Tessie, representing the, uh, the, the uh, Applicant Network Development Co. LLC. Mr. D'Andrea again is here with me. And in this application, uh, we have a continuation of the Commission's 
uh, first hearing on, on it back on uh, January 10th. At that meeting, the application was left open to address uh, essentially one, primarily one specific issue of the commission, which had to do with the open, the, the uh, proposed new open space area. As uh, I believe you all recall, the application before you is to modify, technically is to modify an existing approved four lot subdivision of the subject property by reducing the number of lots from four to two as shown on this marked up uh, uh, development plan prepared by Mr. D'Andrea. During our, uh, our, our original application provided for an open space area on the, the left. Okay, thank you, Tony. I don't know where that one was. But it's, it's uh, okay. That application provided for I don't think that's, that's, okay. That application as previously submitted was to modify the open space area, which was of record on the four lot plan, four lot plan subdivision or record sheet and provide for a bifurcated open space that totaled 15%. Uh, commission members, somewhat strongly, uh, advised us that that was not going to work. Uh, there were comments also from our conservation director's office and we consulted with our client um, and Mr. D'Andrea came out with, uh, developed another plan which is acceptable to our client of incorporating this whole um, west side of the proposed driveway into an expanded open space area which happens to equal a little over 20%. And then there were per discussions of, with commission members regarding the north, uh, and I'm sorry, not the north, but the, uh, um, the east side of the open space area. We propose to make that area almost entirely a conservation easement area. The, um, so we got up in terms of total percentages to essentially ballpark of where you were back on the four lot plan. The um, wetlands agency uh, director, uh, Pat Sesta, in, in comments that I think you all have, but I'm not sure because I don't know, but in comments back and forth with Mr. Leroux pointed out that uh, the, the protected area on this left side here again, the which is we'll get things backwards. That's yeah, that's east. East side would be um, uh, has to have the same amount of protected area from her point of view, and if not, she would have the she would state that it's not consistent with the permit that was issued, and we would our client would have to uh, reapply for a modification to to the. Wetlands Agency, which may or may not look favorably upon it, but certainly was favorable was the expanded open space area, particularly since we have a wetland area. We spoke to our client, um, and knowing that this area actually was protected anyway because of the proximity of the wetlands and ordinary buffer, in fact, it is wetlands, client agreed that we can accept the modification of this plan as a condition and make this entire area conservation easement area. And in doing that, we essentially by, are adhering or proposing to you exactly what you told us to come back with. Uh, all conservation easement here, which would be part of the rear lot, which is 68, and open space along the right side of the, uh, of, of the driveway leading to 68. So you're willing to do that? Absolutely, absolutely. Just to make sure, Pat, that is the triangle that she was referring to? Correct. Okay. Yeah, up here. It's not quite a triangle, but it's... Was she uh, yeah, it's a triangle, actually. No, it's that, not, actually. That's it. The, the wet, well, that area will be, yes, but the Yeah, but that's wasn't. a triangle she was referring to. Because that was where the line was. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we should have probably just something included. very small because the, the, there's a <laughs> in the original one there was a teeny little triangle up there at the top, way at the top of the of the triangle. There's another one that's outside the line of the wetlands. Oh, up Again, there. It, just, okay. It, okay, so <laughs> I think we're all in agreement. There was one. Uh, I do have to clarify one point, and that has to do now with with the re, with with these. Proposed removal of the uh, the two trees, one in the town right of way, at the entrance, at the intersection with Halsey Drive, and that was raised by. Uh, well, um, the specific one is the one that's in the town right of way. The other yeah. one we can't. We well, we get, like our, you to our keep client it. actually does not want to remove those trees. Oh. Mr. D'Andrea, being the engineer and being concerned about space spatial issues, felt that. Um, they may have to go, but our client does not want to lose the trees, actually, okay. and uh, wants to make every effort to keep them. So we can specifically provide that our, our client's intent is not to remove the trees. If, if, if during construction it becomes an issue, I think when we did the, uh, Tony was a subdivision, remember we worked on a Lockwood, there was, some, there was some language in there about going, that if you were gonna be removing trees, you have to work with staff. We had some language from the Lockwood decision, remember? That could be the right decision in this instance, too, on that. So I'm just thinking. The three those were trees in the open space, in the no. right of way? No, right of way. The town right of Well, <coughs> town right away, the tree warden has to approve it. Yes. Yeah. We all know that. I'm just saying there was language there. So the tree warden probably covers that. I th anyway, well, this would. one here that's on our property, if you feel concerned about it, I'm saying we can we, we, we well, can I would say that you'll just modify. I mean, the subdivision map that you're going to submit on this is was, doesn't say anything about trees. No, it wouldn't. It'll, it'll, this is the subdivision map itself, actually, not the development. This would be the map that's recorded in the land records. I understand that. Yeah. I'm just saying it doesn't show trees. So no, it doesn't. They typically don't. Yeah. The thing about those two trees is that if you don't, I mean, you can't have concrete trucks and everything rolling by those two trees. You're going to have to get some sort of a construction road north of or top. <laughs> Which way north is on this sheet? I don't know. Is yeah, it north to is the on right? top. Well, anyway, along along um, what's the name of the road? Halsey. Halsey, Halsey yeah. Drive. Along Halsey, you're probably going to, you don't want to, I mean, if you've got trucks going over those routes, you're going to kill the trees anyway. So there has to be some way to, to who's going to be built first, the one on the top or the one on the bottom? I know they're that, there but the thing is, they're there already, but you know that if you have a lot of truck capacity over those tire, those routes, they're going to, um, so how do you do that? Well, that was Mr. D'Andrew's concern, but let, let him take over. Tony DeAndre, just for the record, I, I tried to anticipate that there might be a problem. I proposed that the trees be removed. The client said, Tony, I don't really want to remove them. I said, it's better to have a dialogue now. If the commission wants to make a condition that you don't remove them, fine, we've had a dialogue. But I, I just wanted to let it be known that I have considered it. There may be a problem. I'd rather let you know about it in advance so we can decide if it's appropriate or not. Okay. So the answer is the client doesn't want to remove them. Okay, so we'll do everything we can to prevent that destruction. Well, I just don't think those roads should be used for the construction traffic. Right. So they can the move the construction access just um, further to, to the, the west, west on the right. um, front yeah. lot, and the other lot it has the driveway there, and there's really no place else to put it. Can you really do that? I don't know why not. So you, as long as you don't build the, the bottom one first and sell it through somebody's yard. Well, I think he's yard. looking to. I don't. I think he's looking to sell that. Yes, but this is a construction. A mega plan that has a just has a construction plan. easement across. I, I I hate to commit to that. No, I'm I saying, don't want to, John, John, all you have to do is just agree that the construction access can be west of the existing driveway. It's fine. We're talking about for lot 66. No. 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 We're only talking about the front lot. Yeah, we can't talk about the rear lot. That's only for the front lot. We cannot bring the construction access to the rear lot through this through this front. You can't. No. That's going to be sold. Our client wants to build his home here and sell this. But the sequence is. I can't can't control you don't the know sequence. That yet. They're separate properties. That's why we have them separate. Well, then how are you? Properties. Will you be able to even? I mean, I'm just curious. The the tree that's in town right of way. The driveway is already there. You've got to speak into the microphone. Sorry, on the record. What, don't, what he what he said is that. Okay, it'll the stay. client is he, 
the client's adamant he wants to try to save the trees. That's the irony. It, I don't, that's usually not the case with most clients. Yeah, well, we like all tree right. hugging. So he's going to make all reasonable efforts, all right. reasonable efforts to preserve the trees. The, the, that's what he wants to do. Okay. I don't know if we can condition this. I don't, can that, yeah. that note can't be on a subdivision map, so. Well, we don't have to worry about We'll just make it, I guess it could just be a part of our findings. Yeah, and we don't have the right away one to worry if about. If he kills the tree, the tree warden will be after him, so. Right. Because it's in the town right away. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, the, the habitat enhancement plan that was in our packages. Um, yes, by Matt Pop. Could, Mr. McRae, do you mind if I just stay on Kenny. this issue for just yeah. a second? Absolutely. If it's, the, if it's a pop town tree that's in the town <coughs> right of way, <laughs> then no you can require protection around it or, or something more than just, okay. we'll try not to knock it down kind of thing. And, yeah, and we're, which we're, we're happy with. Here we'll put up yeah. appropriate tree protection and make every reasonable effort to, to sustain a tree. That's fine. Well, I think it has to be a bit more than that if it's a town tree. It can't just be a reasonable effort. It has to be a commitment. No, I said he will make okay. preservation efforts. It is a town tree, so. Right. In coordination with the town tree warden, would that be Coordinate the town tree warden, but I don't, but, but, you know, I just don't want to make it so absolute that the man cannot build, get, build his home. Well, if, if he needs to remove the tree for a reason, then he obviously has to go through the tree warden. So that, I, that, that's, my, that's I the only point you. I'm making, that he, it needs to be stated so. Okay. It can't just be every, every the tree, The town tree to. warden, I, I'm not sure exactly how to word it at this point, but it, I think it's an acknowledgement or a fine, or, or a we're asked by you that that tree is in is in the town is is in the town right away, and and effort should be made. Appropriate protection efforts should be made to try to save it. Uh, uh, and well, that, can we condition it this way that, that there will be there will be no zoning permit issued until that tree has been discussed with the town tree warden? Yeah. Well, or how, or how about the, the, every effort will be made to save the tree if there's, right, it's well. understood that this is a town tree and therefore it's subject to the rules and regulations of town trees, meaning that if there's some issue with the tree, it has to go before the, the like through that? the town tree warden process. Yeah, that, that's basically. Do we, are, are there highway permits for those two driveways? Not yet. They would have to be so, so applied for. So during the highway permit, that tree will also become an issue. A factor, yeah. Again, we have layers of permits. Right, because you might have to move that one driveway further away from the tree. Well, there's not only no room to move it. Well, there's you no, could move it, move it a well, couple one of is, feet. Maybe, but. This, one of the beauties of not combining the two driveways, by the way, is we have a shot at preserving both trees. Obviously, if they were combined, one tree was going to go. And he, the client wants to keep it. So we're all of the same mind. I just don't want to put the man in a position that he, you know, can't, he can't build. But we do have a plan that actually proposes uh, two replacements. It does because that was con because that plan that was proposed was based upon Mr. DeAndrea's plan that the client didn't know about, and Mr. DeAndrea proposed to remove the trees. So then the uh, the habitat plan that I'm looking at, the enhancement plan here, I should disregard those two trees that. Well, we're just saying that that's what happened. Mm -hmm. The client did not want them removed. Mr. Kenny, I think, did that plan. Mr. Yes. Plan. Mr. Kenny worked off through Mrs. DeAndre's plan. Right. The client didn't focus in on it and said, what are you doing? I don't want to remove the, the trees. So that plan needs to be modified. To not show the two trees. Mr. Tessie? Well, that's what you... Mr. Tessie? So are yours? I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm oh, those are saved. I'm sorry. Those are the those are the existing trees. Those are the existing trees. Okay. So he is proposing to say them. I take it back. We, you're leading me down the wrong it, road, it's, Mr. Mack. It doesn't wrong say driveway. that on the plan. It just says that uh, that's proposed. Oh, I see. But, but you're saying these are the existing. No, Tony. How could it be the existing know, tree when the tree is shown to be inside the right of way, it's inside, the, inside right the, of the property line? Yeah. The, the, the existing trees are shown. Okay. Way. Whatever it is, he wants to make the effort to preserve the tree. Okay. I, I doesn't matter whether these are the existing or not. Trees here is inside the property. Yeah, so I know that can't be the same tree. Can't be the same. The other one could be. <laughs> I'm not the other sure. one could be yeah, an no. existing tree, but he's drawn it. He says a 26 inch oak. I know. Hey, well, we've that's got further on the you property. Guys, that let's... any town, any trees in the town right away are going to be preserved, protection to be provided in coordination with the town tree warden, and any action 
um, to be taken will be approved by the tree warden. Full stop. We don't have to talk about where they all that was, are. That was, I couldn't agree with well, the pros any with better. Any okay. So uh, just agreed. just, we don't just have a, to just the next, se next sentence. Yeah. If the trees have to go, do we want to have something put Any back in? Any action will tree have warden. to be approved by the town tree warden. If they want to take it down, the tree warden is going to take them what, tell them what to do. Ms. Alvin, can you put your microphone on, please? Sorry, I'm shouting, so I thought I was doing good. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So, and again, the other condition, of course, was that we will add this triangle. Could, could you also flip back to the um, to the subdivision map? I know it's, it seems like a small issue, but to the right there, you'll see sort of a ghosted thing that says the uh, P2 open space. You need to get that out. It needs no, to your right. Keep right. Up to the right, a little bit more. There. Oh, that, 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 that's, a left, that's a leftover. Could you get it out? It's just kind of yeah. confusing. Yeah. I know why it's there, but it's just yeah. confusing. Excuse me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. For the record, we left on, shadowed in the old lots so that you could see you could see what was there once before. Yeah. That was P2 open space. This map was a resubdivision, so I wanted to let you know where the other lots were. That's why it's there. No, it I will understand. come off the other lot. Well, the we're going to tell you to just, anyway. Right. Just take it off right. the subdivision. We're gonna, go the, what we're going to do, Mr. Maitland, just for everybody to understand, we're going to take <laughs> off then all the yeah. shadowed lines. Right. Right. So all you're going to see is the final lots. But, but this you, plan was presented so you could see how we got to here. Would you also, in your notes section up there, put in a, 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 a sort of a history of this site? Like, what was it? The other prior right. approvals? This, right. This, okay. This supersedes all of those prior approvals. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Um, There's really only, there's only one. There's only one official. Whatever. But the, well, the, no, I think we approved two. We approved you a four did, lot. But the other one, the three record sheet was never signed, uh, so it died. I don't. I think it, it would it confuse up. matters by, by referring to something that never be. I'm going to just say. I don't, I'm not going to But it was death. submitted. I don't have to ask it, do I? I understand, but people are going to look for it, and there's no, no record on it. Right. So it's so not going to make just a lot. One. Of there's, a, there's nothing filed. It's just going to Katie, confuse matters. Are you happy with that? The, the, since the one map, the, the one approval they got, they never filed a map, and so therefore it just it disappeared. Right. So well, the one that they did file was for the settlement. But was, so, was there a suit taken on that first? That's what, what created was it, the, the first settlement. subdivision. Yeah, no, so the let me, ex was, let me explain this. So the, the notes, you're going to add notes on it that show so. the approval that. You didn't just let lapse, but the approval that was existent prior yeah. to this. And that's what that's what Note One does. It refers okay. to the prior one, eight one eight zero, which Perfect. was the official map. Just to clear, just to answer your question, there was never an appeal taken of the subdivision. What, what happened was it was an issue. It was a lawsuit over the uh, uh, dec what we call a declaration, an action for a. Um, Declaratory judgment yeah. that the deed restriction was inapplicable that the prior owner lost. And does that explain in note one? No, note one simply states that the purpose of this this plan is to modify the approved subdivision 8180 that's on record. Yep. I okay. think that's all you that, want to do. That's the only one that's on there. Right. Yep. So that's fine. But this commission reviewed the plan that was the result of that private but they also filed they also filed a map to sort of memorialize that settlement what no 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 there was that, let me clarify this okay. for the record since we're talking of the record there was what happened is the client made an application i represent in that action to to come up with a three lot plan a resubdivision to have three lots rather than four right consistent with a negotiation he was having with the neighborhood association and neighbors in that lawsuit. Yeah. They never, he kind of jumped the gun because what happened is they never were able to finalize their negotiations. Well, so the court, yeah. so the court ultimately found in favor of the neighborhood and said that we, f we, um, we find that the the restrictions were, in fact, still valid restrictions to this property. With that happening, that client sold the property to the current owner and left left Dodge. 
No, so, but there was a map, 8180, that showed the three lots. Four lots. Four lots. No, four lots. Right. That was approved by this commission. There were no appeals. That was approved. A declaration of restrictions and the subdivision map were both filed in the Greenwich land records. All right. Those are the two documents, one a map, one a declaration, because that had a different configuration of the open space. And now that we've come here to modify, we are going to add to that declaration of restriction. We're modifying that declaration of restrictions, <coughs> working with the law department and the mm -hmm. town uh, uh, planner's office. And we're also going to add a conservation easement right. document, which will be a separate document to cover the area on the uh, on the top here right that's the actual process we're following right i think katie gets it and pat gets it so if you oh. just defer to them we'll be fine all i know is there is a map filed 8180 and we absolutely all agree and that's okay. the only map filed and it was a legal subdivision the 8180 and note number one that you're uh, that we specifically say the purpose is to modify so i think we're covering you that name which was Mr. D'Andrea's point. I get to him. Um, so when you sent this map in, I just, just to confirm it, I, I think what I'm going to say is true, but the, you, you showed some sketch layouts for the earlier subdivision layout. For a lot, the 8180 map is what's no, the No, 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 there. for this one. You showed like a site plan for the, the oh, hill, yeah. for the house on top and the, that. Those still apply because you never resubmitted that drawing. Those are good. <coughs> Those are good. Those okay. are also, there are permits issued by the wetlands agency for yes. those developments okay. also. Did not change. Right. All right. Um, can we save tree? All right, well, we're going to try to save that tree. And there's a whole bunch of staff okay. rooms in room. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just, just roll those in. Any other commission comments? Any comments from the public? My name is Francia Alvarez, and um, I just wanted to go back to the town trees again. So um, the question that I had is the tree to the left of the one that is originally uh, considered a town tree. Um, there's uh, con some confusion because of the new latest GIS map that shows that it is a town tree, and the older map that um, Tony had used that shows that it wasn't a town tree. So I would request that the um, tree warden go out and take a look at that other tree and determine whether or not it is a town tree or not, because then that would fall into a different classification as to how it's handled. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? One other thing is that I, my understanding was that um, according to the town code that any tree uh, six inches and above is supposed to be on a map, uh, a site plan map, and the, the uh, trees that are on this uh, map that has been uh, uh, filed is for uh, 12 inches and above. So that would mean that all the trees between six and 12 inches are not on the site plan, and that would mean that there could be a lot more tree loss on the property than uh, what is accounted for here in the site plan. So uh, I'd wonder why. Right, it's because it's a subdivision. I so it doesn't have to be in a subdivision? Are they not required to show it all A 10-inch caliper is the requirement in the subdivision regulation. So, and they're only showing 12, 12 is what Mrs. Alvarez Well, I, I guess the question to the applicant would be, are, are all trees 10-inch caliper and above being shown? <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to ask. My name is Richard Wolfram. I live at 64 Halsey. I live on the house to the west, the one that is contiguous to what is now about to be called uh, conservation easement. But I have a question. Are we going to get an answer to the 10-inch question? Um, we're, yes. Okay. Well, we'll ask the applicant. <laughs> right. I mean, I was We usually when, let him close listen to all the questions right. and respond at the end. Right. Okay. So I just have a um, thanks to Pat for clarifying things, but I think I'm still a little bit in the fog. Um, 
So an ease, a, a document has to be filed, as I understand. Mr. Changing Holton, can you can you speak changing the designation? <laughs> sorry, changing the designation of that. I'm going to step over here. You can take it, take it right out, and take it with you. There we go. Right. Um, okay. So so I live right here. Um, that's Halsey. 64 is here. Um, so here's this. Here's the front lot. So conservation right here. Conservation easement. Before. Am I correct? It was called an open space? Yes. Okay. So what is the significance of its being changed to the characterization as a conservation easement legally? Legally, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of whether the lot, if it was called open space, that must be transferred out to an ownership that, by fee. If it's a conservation easement, it remains the property of the lot, the 68 in this particular case, to be used for FAR purposes. Right. Okay. But the development that can go in there is conditioned, obviously, on wetlands and what their conditions are, and it's also conditioned further by a conservation easement that they can't go in there and, and build and use it and so forth. So nothing it's, can be done on it? In terms of a building, nothing can be done in there in terms of a building. There'll be some... We have some plans already from, uh, the, I think wetlands already had their approval and what uh, you could do with the trees there. And then the, um, uh, we also have a planting plan that was submitted as a part of this presentation, that just showing that there's, um, there's, there's a, if, okay. if you can read that, there's a con uh, considerable number of trees being going no. in there next no, to your property. Okay, great. So when you say transfer to a different fee ownership, what, to, this open space. If it were well, done that, that way, if it had, it, oh, then, it, had then, it remained as open space and to be transferred to a separate fee, I don't quite to whom. It's no, the 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 one that's to, shown in dark green. Right. Well, that yeah, that that's, that's open that's space. Open, that will go to a, probably to a homeowners association. I don't know. We'll get the name from the applicant oh, really? in a minute. Oh, oh, well, that's it. That's out. That that oh, can't I, be used I, for FAR purposes oh, or so anything. Oh, so that's what was going to happen with this, but not but anymore. Not anymore. I see. I guess it would have been the, the Havermeyer Park Owners Association. No. No, no it, it will be no. an ownership because it's oh. all part of this parcel. Oh, okay. So it will be to the... All right, something the, created. Well, it will either create a homeowners association or I don't think there's any other... If it was contiguous to a, a, a Greenwich Land Trust or something like that, it would probably be transferred to them. Okay. Just but as a matter. It's not. Okay. okay. All right. So thanks. Just as a matter of clarification to what Mr. Tessie said, the lawsuit was actually uh, by the two contiguous uh, landowners, my neighbor and myself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Mr. Tessie, do you want to summarize or do you want to get in and talk to us about the trees and what's shown on the survey? <laughs> oh, they've grown. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> on the original, right, Mr. J. Andrea and the original subdivision map, original approval did locate all the 10 inch trees, and a lot of time has gone by, and maybe some have grown, he said. Well, uh, if they were located, if they've grown, they're only bigger, so then that would confirm yeah, with the 10 right. inches or more. Right. So basically, all of his work dates back to the original subdivision approval. And no, but they did were he show all 10 inch trees? Yeah, yes. So he showed all 10 inch oh, yeah. trees. Yes. Okay. That's what he's representing. Right? Right. Just on the conservation easement, just to clarify one point, what you said is correct. The beneficiary of the conservation easement actually is the homeowners association too. That's who the easement runs to. That's what we typically do on the town's forms. So, uh, on the um, in section six dash two ninety six of the subdivision regulations, it does state that de that the developer shall leave not less than two naturally growing trees of the trunk diameter of not of not less than two inches in the front yard of each lot or shall plant two trees with trunk diameter of not less than two inches in the front yard of each lot. So can you confirm that, that you're meeting that condition? If they, yes, we but accept that as conditions, a requirement, right. Right, that's right. the requirement of the subdivision regulations. Yes. Okay. Okay, so what you're saying is there'll be, uh, the, the, 
And the name it should be, the, the name of who you're going to transfer those owners should be on this map. Well, we ordinarily do, Mr. Andrew does. The client chooses the name of his homeowners association and he'll put whatever you, wh whatever whatever calls it, was it, what's ever going to be in your written will declarations say, will say needs to be shown on this like map. 6668 home, Halsey Homeowners Association, whatever he wants whatever. to call it. Yes, that will, that's what the practice has been recently. But I want, the, I want the name will be. Uh, that's what you've been requiring, and that's what we've been doing. What I didn't know and realize is you're telling me that the conservation easement will also be in to the homeowners association. The beneficiary. In other words, when you grant an easement, there's an easement holder. I see. The easement holder is the association. Okay. That's the way we've always done but it. But the fee, the underlying fee for the property Names is still to 68. Yes. Okay. That is correct. Is, is there one declaration of restrictions for both pieces, or will there be one for the open, do the fees? We typically do, with? here it's not a bifurcated situation in terms of open space. There's one that's open space, which is on the east, on the kept saying the west, the P1. The conservation easement, we typically do a separate document. We did one most recently, one Round Hill Road. We just had one approved two lots, had both fee and conservation easements, and we submitted to you, and you accepted, and we recorded, a conservation easement for the conservation land running to the to the association and a, a fee ownership declaration of restrictions running to the association we just recently did it uh, for okay. 294 uh, round hill and that's what i'm used to, to seeing and doing working with staff in so we'll be submitting as i said earlier two documents one will be a modification of the existing document changing schedule a to leak you know you know incorporating the new plan so that's a modification. Is there a problem to do it as one document? Yeah, because one's an easement and the other one is a transfer of ownership. Okay. That's the way you've, you've done it. Just to say. I mean, I, we can get creative, but that would seems they, to work Would they cross-reference each other or does that complicate things? Uh, typically in the forms that you've, you've approved, we don't, we don't cross-reference. They're cross-referenced by way of reference to the specific conditions of the subdivision map. Mm -hmm. That's how they're linked. Okay. If you want to cross-reference, we can put it in. It would be a good well, idea. Well, I think, I think since both of the documents refer to the filed map, yeah. one would, by the natural course, identify that there's something else. Yeah, it's the file. first time it's come up, but I'm, yeah. that's a, probably a good idea. It's fine. There, there are um, 10 issues and recommendations from the staff in, in this report. Do you have any problem with any of them if it just gets incorporated in the... Um, <laughs> Saving some time, hopefully. I was just going to put them in. Let's see if they got a problem with them first. Uh, the intent. Um, you know that the well, you've done IWWA is, has yeah. addressed number one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with, by by way of uh, communication with Mr. Leroux. This will be a resubdivision. It's a resubdivision, clearly. That. Yeah. Title search. We had the key, we provided the prior information. I don't know if you need anything more. Um, these aren't really. These are really kind of like. Well, the, 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 the basic stuff. Underground I utilities, think basic stuff. Commission should determine if. Two driveways make sense. I don't. We've we've. Well, I I don't feel that they should be separate. I think they. I'm sure you'll want them separate. Yeah, they are, and that helps save the trees. If they weren't, then the tree would have to go. Declaration restrictions approved by the health department. Of oh, health department, that the, the uh, law department conservation right. um, prepared a record sheet with the with these notes. <coughs> We agree with A, B, C is typical, D, pre blast, that's typical, E, measures. Um, are, I think they're already there. I did see them, yeah. Okay. Those are all the notes you want. So, to, yeah, no, there's nothing there. Okay. Some are really for you to consider, but all the required notes are, are, have been acceptable right along. I don't see anything new. All right. Okay. Thank you. And do you want to close this? Mrs. Hilvers? Yes.
Lucia Alvarez. So uh, Tony just said that uh, the uh, ten inch trees that were originally uh, mapped uh, uh, twelve years ago, ten years ago, uh, have grown to twelve inches, and that why it is why it shows twelve inch trees on the maps. What happened to the trees that were eight inches? Have they grown to ten, and should they now be on the maps? I just think that there's there's some discrepancy with what's actually on the property, and so that's why I keep bringing this up. Thank you. Where is the requirement, Pat, for 10-inch trees to be shown? Section 6-266, 6 6 number 10, states, existing features such as buildings, stone walls, wooded areas, rock outcrops, <coughs> isolated trees of 10 inches in caliper or more, and other such other trees as may be significant to the property or other similar items. Yeah, we're going to just condition it. We're going to say they have to do that. Uh, but how? Why is that in subdivision? Well, because the, the, the commission has the authority to protect the trees under the subdivision regulations. So they, if they, I, I, be, I believe that the the thought into creating that language is that those trees be shown, and then the commission can make a determination. No, but the they're never shown on the map that gets recorded. So how would that be recorded on a on a map? Or, what would you say about that? I've never seen a save this tree on a subdivision map. Well, that that would be your decision. We we have done that in, in the past. We've we've on saved subdivision. Sure. And I think I it's can think of one on Old Orchard that we saved. Um, okay. And, and it's the layout. Would one that we were just referring it's, to? It's also. under the layout section, so it's it's essentially the the development plans that that require those to be shown. It's not. It would not be on the recorded map unless that's, you. That's what I'm saying. It. Right. I think one of, but, one of the other, other the, issues the, under, under um, Division 7 of the preservation of land, when you are determining where the best location is for open space, where the development envelopes I'm are. That's done. Right. So. Well, I'm pointing out the answer to your question is why, why do you want to know those things on the plan? Where, what are the other existing features? So I think that helps you when you're deciding what are, the, what are the best locations for open space and the development of the lots. That's why you want that kind of information. But on the map, shown. but on the subdivision map itself, that won't oh, be shown. No. Right. Okay, so that's just to guide us. I, I would, and you're making okay. a decision. I would also note that there is a, a upland review area that encumbers much of these lots. A what? An upland review area from the IWWA yeah. that encumbers a lot much of this lot, and I believe tree removal is uh, is subject to them to an extent in those areas. They, they are sensitive to that, and they're, they, both these development plans, as I said earlier, have obtained permits and were thoroughly reviewed by staff. I mean, Tony, Tony's best knowledge, you know, there really is nothing else other than what he's showing on the property. So I, I think right. it's kind of overkill at this point to have a yeah. client pay for him to go out and, and find a couple of trees, and it's not no, going to serve I, any I purpose. Think, I think what I was trying to get from staff yeah. is what's the purpose of it since what you're here for tonight yeah. and what we ask you to do is is we realize that what you're showing here on the map for the, the site plans may not be that in the end. It's pretty close. Tony well, it actually could, spent a lot of time with, with the owner well, on, on that particular that, site plan. But I understand, but it coincidentally is where the house is now in a way. And so both that, locations that's are That's what where the they, client wanted. I understand that. Yeah. But I'm just saying if you're selling the one downstairs, the one at the on, on Halsey, you don't know where that's going to go exactly. Now, however, let me just make this clear. If there's a material change to the lo conceptual location for those for those, either of those lots, given the proximity of the wetlands, the wetlands director will have to make a determination whether she can approve it or whether it's going back to the wetlands. So you really have a situation here where the wetlands are really, agencies really under, you know, in control, as Mr. LaRoe pointed out, because everything is within 100 feet of a wetland. So you do have that additional protection. Okay. I mean, 100, yeah, I said it right, 100 feet of the wetlands. I, I'd also just like to point out for everybody in the audience, too, is that the, there are, will be wetlands permits for the development of each of these lots, correct? Correct. That's what I said earlier. We have them. Well, you have conceptual approval for the division. No, no, no. It's in actual, and, and Pat noted it in her memo to you. She specifically stated permits have been issued. She stated and that. So in her that memo is for the development. The, so these, of these are not. each lot. There are two permits, one for each lot. So the, the coverages and the, the impacts of, on the wetlands has been evaluated on these plans, and this is what's going to be submitted? Yes. Okay. I yes. just I want to clarify. I, no, it's that, good. It'll be clarified. That was that. Not I didn't realize you didn't in, know that. In Pat's discussion with me, so I just want to make sure that that's... Yeah, and she refers to permits, not conceptual approval okay. in her memo to you. Look, when, when is this going to end? 
I mean, this is getting ridiculous. He's been up three times. He, he and you keep getting up. Time. Well, I think at the end of the day, well, you the can way have it the, works, the applicant finishes. You can have the last word, as always. Uh, I apologize. I think it's the second time. Um, and I, I do have a serious interest. This is a 12-year uh, long saga. I live right next door. I just wanted to emphasize because of the point that was just made, because I'm somewhat uncertain about the continuing scrutiny of the effects on the wetlands. It's not just soggy, mushy ground. It's this stream. This stream, I just want everyone to know, flows like Niagara Falls uh, during heavy rain. And that stream goes into a culvert on my property, <clears throat> goes underground. You know that, I, I think you know, it goes into Shangala Park and then into under Route 1, Benny Park, and out to the Sound. Uh, if there is undue burden on that stream from anything that happens, I could suffer very significantly. The question then is, whom do I go to? If they do things according to what their plans provide, I don't know that I have any legal recourse with the town. Therefore, all I want to say is that I hope there will be close continuing scrutiny of the development and of the effects on the wetlands, and in particular that stream. My basement will suffer. That thing will, that culvert will overflow, and it's going to go into my property, and there could be uh, untold consequences. So uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Tesse, but that's extremely no, important. Excuse, you should be addressing us. That's extremely important. Okay. And it's extremely important to the to the overall environment because of the downstream effects uh, of, as I just explained, where that stream goes, right out to Long Island Sound. That's not the purpose of this hearing. No, I, I understand, and but... Uh, let's keep the questions to this application. Right, but the... And, and so what we pointed out is the applicant <coughs> has received wetlands approval for these two building lots. And I believe, as a neighbor, you would have been noticed about those applications. And if you were concerned about that, you could have addressed them to the wetlands agency. I did. Okay. And I did. so I'm just saying tonight we're adjusting the um, subdivision and discussing the open space as it pertains to the subdivision. I, I understand. I only got shot up because mm -hmm. of the comments at the end because it was my understanding that there would be continuing review of the effects on the wetlands and now right. I just heard something that says suggested that maybe that was not the case I wanted to be sure about that so the, the, wet, the staff of the wetlands agency do monitor the properties through okay. development okay so because they have this permit that is for the development of those lots they they will be monitoring it during right. construction okay. and well, certainly feel free to call town hall at any time if there's if there's an issue okay. and we'll be okay and that I appreciate that because that that satisfies my question thank you thank you mr. Tessie no mas. No <laughs> we'll close this. Roberto Urban. That ends the um, uh, public hearing. There is a discussion item um, regarding Pickwick Plaza. Is there anyone here who wants to talk about that? Oh. Mr. Tessie? Okay. Want to talk to us about sorry, the Pickwick Plaza? Sorry about that. Um, I, I'm here with Jonathan Metz, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, the owner of uh, Pickwick Plaza's um, architect. And Jonathan, really, it's his project. And there's a bit of a history, but we're basically here, I think, before you uh, on the issue of the landscaping plans being proposed or modifications, which include the removal of existing trees, right? So I'm trying to hone in on the issue and the rationale um, for the uh, removal, right? Is that? Sum up no, I, I think about? the issue is you're modifying 
a site plan that has a stipulated agreement. And yeah. per the court, it needs to be submitted as a site plan change, not a landscaping change. That's the well, discussion. Well, we can never find the original. Maybe well, we, you have. A, don't well, you agree well, there's an agree, a stipulated agreement? There was a stipulation that dealt with the primary purpose of the stipulation was to deal really with the entire project, basically the project itself. And so far as the landscaping plans were concerned and how the site was going to be um, addressed over the years, um, that's something that's been ongoing. We doubt that the site itself, in terms of those areas where they were planting, were exactly the same as the original um, concept, but we don't know that because no one can locate the landscape plan. This plan here is not meant to do anything other than enhance the aesthetics of the property. We're not proposing to increase the we're not proposing to increase the amount of impervious surface on the deck. As you know, this is all built over the parking deck. We're trying to address concerns of our client, given the number of years, there's been no change, to, uh, as I said, increase the aesthetics. And it, there's been a major issue regarding a few trees as to how much they've grown and uh, the capacity or the capability of the structure of the um, garages or the roofs of the garages to carry that weight. That's really a safety issue and it's also you know, pretty major construction issue if they're, they're failures. Our client, I can tell you, it's like Donald Trump loves, he loves trees, that's not the issue. And he's, he, this is not about the money, this is about aesthetically right, so making make changes. App, make an application and so it can be vetted publicly and vetted by ARC and well and why well, should this not be an application uh, in all my years I, I've seen plenty of changes to sites sites involving landscaping with a major first time this, the, this, the water feature needs a building permit it's over, well, we five just, feet, it's over five feet tall. It needs a building it, permit. Look at it this way. Earlier this evening, we just had Gren come in here yeah. for a site plan, and all they were doing is changing the site around, and they, they made an application to us, and it went through this regular way. Why is this any different? Well, first of all, okay, we're, we're here to discuss with you because this all just kind of came up over the last week or so. Uh, I had no idea there was a great fervor on a part of the commission to really have to deal with this well, site, yes. the overall proposed changes. Um, no, but I think the concept of a I major change to a to a project in the site, as I well, I'm gonna, I'm just repeating myself. But I mean, an hour and a half ago, we just did this on this well, on fine. a project. That's fine. So it got submitted. Mm -hmm. It went through the whole process, and uh, and I, I do think that um, I think we should air it. communication here because. I understood your major concern, but it's fine because I miscommunicate a lot with people. So that happens. I thought that your major concern was the removal of the trees, not necessarily these uh, the, the, change the, in aesthetics. But well, there's a considerable change in the aesthetics, and I do think that the. Um, it's, look, Mr. Mailey, I'm, I'm not sitting here debating you. I just didn't. We wouldn't have wasted. I wouldn't have wasted the hearing. I would have submitted the application. I wouldn't have wasted your time. Okay. But it's not like it's two o'clock in the morning with nothing else to do. <laughs> so, no, hey, listen, if you all believe that this is something you don't yes. want to defer to the town planner, in in. I don't in, think the town planner wants it. In a well, well, she wants. <laughs> she has to do whatever you tell her because she needs I, her paycheck like the rest of us. I think if you were taking so. the existing trees. Yeah. And bringing them back down to three-inch trees because of structural reasons, that's a whole different discussion than changing the landscaping plan, adding a water feature. Yeah, you think there are material enough site plan changes that it warrants your consideration? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, as I said, there was some miscommunication on that because I would have spent more time <laughs> filing the application. What do you, you know, and, I guess and with that in mind. My, my, my only... And with that in mind. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll let him finish. Yeah. No, because he was just going to say the same thing, that it was a miscommunication. 
anything. No, see, no, I was actually going to say something slightly different. My only okay. concern is that because I would have kind of like gotten this on. I, I would have focused last week on filing the application. <laughs> I didn't know. But so we will uh, not waste any time tonight because unless there are certain elements of this that you think you want to pre-discuss. Uh, well, the only, only to the extent that um, <clears throat> this is a, truly a major change to a, a very um, important part of uh, the avenue of the town and yeah. everything. And yeah. it's, uh, so I do think it needs to at least get out for, for uh, uh, public. Uh, I hear meeting. you. Okay. The other thing is, I'm a little bit surprised um, that the um, were there any. Let me turn it around and do it again, a different way. Were there any other solutions that you you looked at to support these trees um, by other than just cutting them down? In other words, were there any other structural fixes? that were evaluated to saving these trees. Yeah. Jonathan Metz for Perkins yeah. Eastman. There are four stories of parking garage under these trees. The structure was never designed to hold trees of this size or with root, the amount of earth, dense earth, not lightweight as would be used now, that is mounded up. What has happened now is that we have used up the structural uh, factor of safety. So now, the, as the trees continue, we start to stress it's a concrete, it's a reinforced concrete waffle slab garage. We would, in order to support these trees, we would literally have to remove a good portion for four stories of the garage from use, simply to support these trees. And also, they have reached, in terms of life expectancy, they are very shallow. The roots are spread out this way rather than they should be. Um, and our client, as Mr. Tessie said, did not want to remove the trees at all. He wanted to keep the trees, but in doing the analysis of the structure to do the water feature, which he wanted to do when we were submitting it for ARC review, we, with the structural analysis showed that the structural engineer brought up that the tree, these trees and most of the trees on the property were a problem in terms of stressing the garage structure. See, the, the trees aren't in a structural location that the water features in, so I'm not sure what... And, they're, and they're, so they're separated by considerable and, and without... You know what, can I... Okay, we've told them that we like the trees, that we want the trees, that we would like some sort of trees there. I feel like we're beginning to work this. No, I, I think they issues. need to make an application. No, and I they think. need to make an application without us sitting here. We're beginning to work. Uh, we're beginning to work the problem, and what we've said is we want them to come in with an application. Well, I think it's fair enough to get but input. we said that. But um, you heard Ms. Albon, if I may, when you return, can you bring a floor plan of the garage below? Great. When you return, um, I would need to the. You. Um, well, it's like the ceiling plans of the garage right below this. I'd like to know what's going on in but, the ceiling. But I, I think that if with he that, hasn't, that's with great, that but he should return. You, the, the locations of the trees should be shown because, like I say, they're two bays away from this water feature. Mm -hmm. And and also I, just the quickly, issue is not the water feature. The issue was only that the reason that the trees came up was that yeah, in was looking at the water feature, we were now analyzing the entire garage and in looking at the entire garage structure we realized that the trees were a problem right. i think that's what you should lead with when you come back and also an arborist if you say the roots are spreading out and they're, they're shallow we, we, we will address all of that but yeah, i'm glad you clarified that because that has not one has nothing to do with the other well, that's okay, how it was discovered to be an issue and also the when an structural engineer was yeah. hired from us to lose all those shade trees and put these. The water. I mean. And Not a trade-off we're buying into is I think what we're saying to you. And then can we stop? Well, people can jump into the water feature and cool off. <laughs> I just don't want to review anymore. the site plan until we have no, a site plan. I, I, just, being I, I just want to make sure okay. they we, do we, we, You know what? We understand. We bars tonight. I, so we, we, I'm we, not. <laughs> we understand your. I, we, I think we understand your. We understand where you're coming from. Um, I'd like to see a section, existing section, through the uh, that area. 
and the proposed section because it's go we're going from five feet of soil on top of a slab to three feet of soil on top of a slab and I want to understand clearly how that works um, the materials the design I mean, you're gonna have to submit this for ARC any lighting all of that kind of stuff um, and uh, any thoughts, any sketches, any idea of an alternate design to removing the trees? If there was some way to resupport them uh, well, I, through the slabs down to the basement, I'd just like to see it, please. I, I don't think it's, I don't think, I'm just going to say this, it's my view. I think when it's time for a tree to be overgrown, it's in an unnatural spot, and there's only so much can be done, and to force an owner to, to have to spend an incredible amount of money uh, to protect the safety uh, of his of his building and his, and his occupants is is not a fair trade whatsoever. Well, then don't these do trees that. are always going. These trees are always going to have a certain lifespan when they're put on these decks, as was pointed out. But I'm not going to beat it to death. We're going to bring in the that. arbors. We're going to bring constructor. Well, but, but sit there and suggesting that we got to rebuild the garage to save a tree is ludicrous. I'm sorry, ludicrous. Uh, I also like to see uh, the details of the water features and how they relate to the garages below as well. Yep. There'll be a, there'll be a structural structural engineer who will be here to address your issues. Well, I, you know, I think what we're asking for is that just that we. <laughs> it's a fair ask what you're saying. I don't have a problem with it, but I just think we that, just want to see where the that, just, that there has to be a fair balance and understanding about life itself. Okay. Nothing lasts forever, no. except for the planning and zoning commission <laughs> of the town of Greenwich. I guess. <laughs> All right. We get it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Please. Uh -huh. Can I make a quick motion on the minutes? You can make it speedy I quick. I move the minutes from <laughs> January 24th. Is there a 2017 as submitted? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have, I think, two <coughs> things that we close. I'm, I'm counting the yays as I hear them. <laughs> so we have three closed things in the public hearing we have yeah actually four items because we can find the record and do, do we did, do we make separate resolutions on on woodland since because they're different owners oh yeah you have to okay and we can't okay, just so ask that they so be copied four. okay we'll just make obviously whatever how do you get four because oh yeah parsonage nine? sorry sorry yeah Ooh. <coughs> Well, s s since the one is going to likely be more contentious than the others, let's do the easy ones first. Yeah. Does anybody feel otherwise? Start at the beginning. Uh, well, the, uh, we're going to skip around over one of them because it's good. it takes some more time. So let's try to get. <coughs> we'll do 18 let's parsonage. start with parsonage first. Okay. The discussion. Nope. I think the motion. I think I, I think then we're ready for a motion on it. I hereby move approval of the final site plan and special permit, um, noting that uh, both the zoning enforcement officer and the Department of Public Works have reviewed this and uh, going to building permit, that there is no increase in the FAR versus the original proposal, that the conservation department has asked, sorry, has asked for a rain garden um, bioswale and that the applicant will be working with the cons uh, will be working on this design in conjunction with uh, a review by conservation um, that as regards the three pear trees in the town right of way two um, one's a stump oh one's a stump okay <laughs> two um, the tree warden will review it uh, the nomenclature of kitchen will be removed from the floor plans and any other outstanding staff and department comments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, I actually don't think the next one's going to be controversial. I think there's just one vote that. Okay. Then we'll do it. Um, okay, Katie, on this one, we'll probably. Just do two records, but what, you're going to have to separate the comments that we. Fine. <coughs> it would be two different things. Okay. Same, <laughs> Same. owner. And watch this because it's tricky. When he he sent when uh, uh, um, Scott sent us those uh, the two drainage things today, they both came through on 23. On 23, he didn't give us a 23 and a 25. He, he correctly noted the application numbers, but you're correct. The address is wrong. So 
whatever. <laughs> um, even though, I'm sorry, even though they're not merging, obviously they're staying They are not separate merging, they're separate but properties. It's, it's a, but it's I mean, identical approval, just, so yeah. we'll just repeat the motion. Okay. Right. Well, it's one plan. The comments reflect mm -hmm. the one plan. In, mm -hmm. So, so it's got two different lots on it. Two different lots. Yeah. So because there are the cross easements, of and course, cross and all of that, <coughs> so they're related in that way. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, the, the DPW is okay for the building permit, so I, th I think that's good. They just have to work out the language for the easement. Uh, we did talk about a number of cross easements on the property that they will provide. Um, They've got to coordinate the DPW comment about the sewer manhole with sewer. Oh, I was going to hold off on the sewer for a minute, but okay. Um, well, you said DEP. And I just Did I say, I meant DPW. DPW, that's what I meant. Yeah. But DPW had the condition on the manhole. Oh, so, they did? Yeah. Was that what's worth? I didn't, I thought yeah. that was sewer had that. No, it was DPW. Oh, God. That's when Tony said. I thought that was sewer. The sewer made the condition. The 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 sewer made the comment. Scott said the manhole couldn't go into the town right away. Oh. No, that was sewer. No, that was Scott. All right, hold on. We're just double checking. Last paragraph in the first I don't see any. I don't see anything in his thing that says anything about manholes. I thought it was came up with Scott. No, no. That's, somebody that's brought sewer. the Scott comment. The, the thing about the, what the was sewer. in the memos today. The, the easement. That he's all about the easement language. Okay. Because so that's what yeah. we were talking. Or the right of way. That it, no. when we told Tony, we said it was Scott's comment. Well, that's all right. He didn't really pay. I, I don't misspoke. I think we. He was referring to the sewer man. I believe. I, I I know it's in the sewer comments. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'm going to look. I think that remember was kind of his point that how is that possible when the sewer line is is, is right. in, in the, the street? Road, so you obviously have to get into the road. So right. I think that was. Part of why he was well. There's uh, nothing in okay. there's nothing in Scott's memo to us about that. The only thing is that um, the easement. Well, it ha this will be in the language for the easement, but the, all the parking spaces he wants them striped, and and there may be parking meters and things like that. But that'll all be, I guess, covered in the easement. So I, I don't think that we need to say anything else about that. Um, cross easements. I was going to ding Tony on something, but we went so far afoot. Mm. That, there's no reason to dig it, but whatever. Um, okay, so the sewer. I think we're down to the sewer because the uh, ARC has, has <coughs> reviewed the planting. Along they, railroad and approved it with some modifications. Right. Okay. That's, we and know, the wall treatment is okay is, as well. Approved, they've approved that. Um, so the sewer. <coughs> All right, so what you guys agreed to that I have here is, A, that the manhole can't go in the town right-of-way, that there's this issue of the 8-inch pipe going into the 6-inch, and that there's a downstream capacity concern, and that all of these are to be addressed prior to building permit. Or no, I, I want something in there that the applicant agreed to, A, either uh, to answer the comment of an eight inch pipe discharging into a six inch lateral town sewer. Agreed to address They will, these they will change that to a six inch pipe on site if, if, if uh, sewer requires it. B, if sewer says you've got to keep the eight inch pipe on site and I want you to change the pipe in the street to an eight inch pipe to increase its capacity, they will do that from the site. They'll do it from west of the site to pick up uh, Greenwich Hardware down to Arch Street. C, anything else that Rich Feminella may require of this site to give uh, a sewer uh, permit. Because um, he's given us some other things about s scoping out the... And we will not issue a zoning sign-off. A zoning permit without... Uh, without Richard's right. approval. All right. Um, Written approval. <coughs> yeah. Clearly understandable. 
and written in English, <laughs> no multilingual. <laughs> Anything else anybody wants to add to this? I guess ARC has done that, so I think it's. Anyone else want to add anything else? No. Oh, I did ask for the cross easements. Yes, cross easements for. <laughs> That's all right. Do you want to mention anything about the setbacks and the findings? Yeah. Do you want to do something with the setbacks in the two zones? Well, I think it's a it's a it's a through. Okay, let's just it's a through lot, and if you look at um, uh, our regulation, I think it's six. Oh, one twenty one. It actually deals with the through lot, and what it says is that each lot shall have a um, a uh, yard because it's dealt with as a front yard. So it means that the the R6 shall have the front yard uh, uh, on Woodland, and the uh, ones on Railroad Avenue shall have a front yard uh, dimension on on Railroad. Now the uh, they they've also utilized um, six. 127 to come up with an average setback <clears throat> on um, Railroad Avenue for their front yard. So those lot, those yards are both compliant. The side yards are compliant, and as we discussed yesterday, the zone line does not impact any rear yard setbacks. There are no rear yards. There are two front yards. So that's anything else. Just wrote yards instead of yards, yeah. isn't that right? Yards. Right. I had those numbers, but it's. We can let we can just cover. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, too many sheets. Okay. Is that the motion? Something like that. Um, no, well, oh. any other? Um, no. Let me just let me just run us through it and make sure okay. we've got it. And you guys know that I'm going to vote against it as I make it. Okay. Everybody. Uh, yeah. That's why I ask if he should make the motion. No, I don't mind making it. I'm just letting you know that this does not mean that I'm going to vote for it. Maybe okay. that's a better way of putting okay. it. You okay. Are, so you're not disclosing your vote before you make a motion. Okay. <laughs> just make sure you know that you are listening or something like that. Okay. So I hereby move approval of the final site plan and special permit for 23 Woodland Drive. Um, uh, and uh, in so doing, we note that all the cross easements. Um, as required by the Department of Public Works um, will be provided, including um, any provisions for striping parking and meters as appropriate. Well, that's different. That's that's the easements. The cross easements have to do with the, the use separate. of the site. In other the words, cross easements as well as the easements that DPW right. wants. Right. Thank you. Right. Um, in addition, um, I'm going to open with saying that the applicant has ad agreed to address all the issues raised by the sewer department and will comply with any other requests and concerns from the sewer department prior to receiving zoning approval. These concerns include a comment that the manhole cannot go in the town right of way, um, that there is an eight inch pipe flowing into a six inch pipe, um, several inspections that they are asked to perform and that the sewer department has expressed some downstream capacity concerns. No, I, I would like to have it in the motion that uh, that the applicant agreed at this meeting to increase the diameter of the I said that. Of the, addressed, pipe uh, the applicant has Avenue. agreed to address these issues and go to and go to a six inch uh, maybe I didn't read it out loud, go to a six inch pipe or do eight inches the whole way and comply with all other requests and concerns from the sewer department prior to the receipt of, his, of zoning approval. I may not have said this. I was going to say one of us is, <laughs> you, yeah, you didn't say didn't it or I didn't listen to it. I had it, it in front of me. <laughs> I had it in front of me and didn't you know read it. it. Sorry. You, you just couldn't bring yourself to say it. I'm just being pissy. I know. I, was <laughs> I, I needed a lot of Snickers bars to get through that one. Um, as regards um, the lot itself and the setbacks, this is a through lot and the sex setbacks um, shall provide with a uh, shall comply with the provisions of 6121 as well as 6127 as requires all zones, required yards, and as I mentioned, the setbacks. We, we're on, we asked for those steps and we're just not going to touch on it. No. 
and then um, that the landscaping along railroad as well as the wall treatment that Nick mentioned have been approved by ARC with some modifications and any outstanding uh, any other outstanding staff and departmental comments could, could we just add that they were using the average setback from railroad I know. Um, yes. Yeah, we, well, yeah. I, I, I know Richard said that, but on that's six one twenty seven, and we mentioned yep. it. But it's good. Oh, to, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, we mentioned six one twenty seven that the um, that the applicant is utilizing both six one twenty one and six one twenty seven as regards zones, required yards, and setbacks. That's it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Whatever. Nay. Okay. Nope. No. No, she I had wants enough uh, information. I can't abstain. Well, you, it's, you can, you it just means you didn't have enough information. No, come on, let her vote against it. Yeah. Yeah, vote against it. <laughs> she, her heart's in voting against it. I did have Richard's personal comment. <laughs> okay, so I hereby make this uh, resolution. I I'm, uh, make a motion to approve the final site plan and special permit uh, for 25. Woodland Drive. Can we just copy the previous resolution, or do you? They're very connected, so it's yes. Like, yeah. yeah. So just the, the entirety of the previous resolution be repeated for this property. Do you want, a separate you want me to read it? it? I, I would just say make the, making the same motion. Motion, though. I mean, you got okay. To All righty. So here no, we go. It. Well, why don't you just say? No, no, not not. You don't have to repeat it verbatim. Just I just say make a motion, motion. same as. Right. Same as yeah. 23 Woodland. Right. That's what I was trying to do. Okay. okay. Second. Today. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is there anyone opposed to this? Yes, I'm opposed. Okay, thank you. But you know. Well, that would have really thrown Tessie if I <laughs> Eat yeah. something. You're Talk about, oh, no, I'm really pissy. <laughs> you want me to give me your sugar to the VIs? Okay. Okay, one more. Okay. Oh. Network. Our site plan. Okay. Or a subdivision. A resubdivision, re actually. I've, I'll get it right. I hereby Give move approval of this final resubdivision um, at 66 and 68 Halsey Drive. And um, we note that the open space is 20.4% that an easement of an uh, I'm open. I'm sorry, open Margarita, it's going to be larger than that now that they've added the easement. No, but I, the, the open, open space, space and the fee. The, open the open space. The open space is not 20. It's with combined. It's 20. It's it's less than that. Don't the open blank. space parcel is not equal to 20. Babe, that's not what is in the staff report. Sorry, but in the staff report it says we have 20.4 in open space and 6.9 percent. And um, the easement, though. P1. No, P1. 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 It's 20. He has it right on the map. Oh, it's 15. Okay, wait. So there's two different sets of numbers, and I okay. The, on, the map is 402. 402. 402. Okay, so in the in the notice it says. Um, yeah, but does I, I believe that mathematic. Okay, so you're saying that it uh, can't be right. 15 and 6 would be 21, so that's not going to work either. Can we leave the numbers open and you guys figure it out? Well, what's the, what's the date? Um, what's the, date? Yeah, the date of the new subdivision map is January. I, I, stand, I stand corrected. You are absolutely right, Margarita. Okay, we're back to I was right. It's okay. No, I know right, because. So the, let's state the map. Map date. Map date <laughs> is the January 16th, 2017, mm -hmm. and on it, is the summary of the open space and the division of the open space in relationship to the total parcel is 20.4 percent. Now that is not what's in the public notice. I just figured that out. Correct. The plan came in after. Okay. Okay. After so 20.4 we'll percent with um, a an an open space an, an easement of 6.9 percent, which shall be modified to include the effect of a request from IWWA to add into it a small triangle currently not protected, which was in the originally approved or um, no. which was in the originally Why don't you just say that the conservation easement C1 shall be increased in size to include the triangle to the west? Because uh, the IWWA 
approved a certain configuration, and I want to refer back to their approval rather than, than well, the C1. The, the it thing was is, called N1 when they you approved it. See where it. these dashes are? Yes, but that's the. White I lines. want to refer it back. I think we're better off since it's their request, and they specifically say. No, it says to the but triangle. This, but this is going to get updated. It, to yes. okay, so we're so going to just whatever we were the triangle yes. that's going to be included in okay, and then okay. therefore, whatever the you want, as long as area will increase the conservation yeah. easement C1 will be increased right. by the addition of the triangular area to the northeast west to okay. make it in conformance with the request IWWA. of IWWA. Um, next thing is there's a small correction to eliminate that ghost open space, right? We're going to get that well, fixed. All okay. The, okay. All the ghosting will be um, moved. Richard, you wanted to add the note that the conservation easement is on lot 68. Did you still want yeah, to do that? Yeah, I okay. do. It just all it's clear, but just and be, that's belts and suspenders. But. And pursuant to um, 6266. We're going to show all inch, all trees of 10 inch caliper and above. No, or not? no, no. Okay. Cancel. Cancel it. Cancel that. Um, we're just going to say that they're going to meet the tree requirement of the subdivision regulations. Or new or, trees, or, or new keeping trees. the two existing trees. That, that's 266. Yeah. Yep. That and then. The yeah. Trees, and then um, trees in the town right of way are going to be preserved. The tree warden will review these and protection to be provided with in coordination with the town tree warden and any action in the future shall be regarding these trees shall be approved by the tree warden. Right, me, I'm sorry, just to clarify. So they, they, they will be preserved to the greatest extent possible. Should that not be able to happen, they'll go through the town tree warden exactly. process. Exactly. So that's the tree warden reviews, protections provided in coordination with them, and if there's any change, if anything happens, any actions have to be approved by the tree warden. Um, the applicant, Richard, just correct me where you and Tessie ended up on this, include a summary of previous approvals? We got that down and, and uh, the, the applicant showed me uh, the note number one, in fact on the, on the resubdivision map, mm -hmm. takes care of it. Okay. It says this plan is a, a resubdivision of a property prepared in accordance with la 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 and to eliminate lot lines depicted on map number 8180. And all so other done. and all other outstanding staff and departmental comments. That's Second. it. Second. All in favor? We Aye. Aye. Now, there was some stuff I wanted to keep from this. Good night.